I cannot believe we're about to do what we're about to do. What's up, everybody? Back for a beer flow show. And this one goes out to it. And he's already actually in the house. This one actually goes out to, well, actually, got Malt Mustang, who's already out here viewing. And we got Bum. So Bum's in the house. So Bum, the lead-in reporter on the Malt Liquor Report on Joe D's channel and probably one of the most important reporters on Malt Liquor. We decided to do a show. We've talked about doing a show for a while on malt beverages or malt liquors, whatever you want to call them there. So we've got some different ones here to try. Not sure how this is going to go. Not sure I'm going to feel in the morning. You know, I, I haven't drank the last two days to get my liver prepared for this one. So I've actually got the Ice House Edge right here. And this is 8% ABV. And going to check this one out. And actually, I used to drink this for a while back in the day. Actually, I used to pitch softball. I would drink one of these before pitching. Um, don't know what's a smart idea. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you had to have the reflexes to be able to handle malt liquor and pitch softball. Mm -hmm. But uh, I used to drink some of these, like a couple of these cans during the game or whatever. After the game, maybe drink a little bit more. But, yeah, you had to pace yourself a little bit. Um, what are you guys drinking tonight? I got, oh, let me say you got Eric, Eric Lyons fan. Make sure you check out Eric's channel. Out of Michigan, Eric Alliance fan, all one word. Yeah. And then I have Todd here from Indiana, our featured regular cast member, part of the panel, whatever you want to call him. Haven't gotten to get a channel yet, but he's in the house. So what are you guys drinking tonight? Uh, I am drinking, I did have Ice House Hedge, but I put it back and I grabbed another one. But I am drinking the Bud Light Platinum, 6% ABV. Nice, nice. I have the four loco gold. Big Daddy. Woo! Fourteen <laughs> percent. Uh, if you see me uh, slouched over in my chair and drool, you know, just give me a shout because it would be yeah. passed out here before. Long. And so uh, we got in there. We got Tim. Cheers, Tim. I said Tim. Tim was out there earlier. Bum hasn't gotten here yet. So, Tim, I glanced over. was actually the first one in the house. And check out Tim's channel, Tim's Beers. I'm sorry, Tim's Brews. He's actually down there in South Carolina. Um, we've got Malt Mustang, as I mentioned. And he'll say, I'll inform my MLDC Malt Liquor Drinking Community friends about the show. Hopefully, they'll join. They're usually a pretty congenial lot. And then he asked, who's Bum? And I met Bum, but um, Bum is on Joe D's show. He's not actually here right now. I glanced over. Bum is usually early on, but it was actually Tim that was in the house. But Bum will show up. He's out of Pittsburgh. He does the malt liquor report on Joe D's show every Saturday night. So if you check out Joe D's channel, I think they usually go about 7 Eastern. You can catch him on there with the malt liquor report. And then we got Eric who says, bring him on, MM. Uh, Jason Forhees, master of, of malt. Welcome, Jason. Eric Gilbert, cheers, malt liquor, baby. Uh, malt Mustang says, not malt liquor. doesn't say malt liquor on the label. What, which one so, are you talking about there, malt? Is it the uh, Four loco? Yeah, which one there, malt? Lend, lend your expertise to this. I always thought Ice House Ed was a malt beverage, right? So, Well, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. This one just says premium malt beverage. Yeah. Yeah, I know the and four locals put the malt beverage on there. Mine just says triple filtered, 6% light beer. We know this ain't a damn light beer, boys. <laughs> but is it malt liquor? That's the question. That's what I'm trying to figure uh, out. But the can so damn shiny, I can't tell. I know when I bought my two things <laughs> of stuff, the guy asked me, do you want the paper bag or should we put it in plastic? And I was like, oh, I'm going to put it in plastic. But I should have got the paper bag for it. Just, you know, try to keep it a little real there. You know, uh, go ahead, Rod. Oh, no, no, I was going to say, Jason Voorhees said, no shame in your game. Ashley Sexton in the house. Welcome, Ashley. says, good luck, gentlemen. God bless your lives. Um, <laughs> she said livers. She said livers. Livers is a little bit funny, but lives is good, too. Um, Eric laughed at that one. Uh, and, right, we do it for the fans, Ashley, as Eric responded. And Ma said all. He said all of them. So, the well, the one that Todd has says malt beverage. I'm mean, now is on, this, on the show title. It is malt beverage. It's not just malt liquor. So. Yeah, I'm all getting right. It is malt <laughs> beverage. <laughs> Don't ding us too much. We're yeah, all come on, man. Around here. This is only the first time we've ever done it. First ever <laughs> show. 
Uh, Raider right Your Parade, I'm going to be doing better than you guys tonight. Just about ready to try Bell Special Double Cream Stout. Had that one. That's a, that's a good one there as well. Um, head coach in the house. He says, Rod, please, I'm begging you to not go to the dark side. No pun intended. Um, malt Mustang says, not malt <laughs> liquor if it doesn't say malt liquor. And then Jason Voorhees says, wish more bells were available here. So I forgot, where Jason, where are you located? I know Eric's up in Michigan, so he gets a lot of bells. But I was curious where you were at as well. Yeah, I and so everybody, everybody said malt Mustang, but we, we didn't say malt liquor. We said malt beverage. So depending where you're at, they call it malt beverage. Um, why is it called malt liquor when it's made of corn? Uh, Eric Gilbert's asking, why is it called malt liquor when it's made of corn? And malt mustangs says technicalities, technicalities. <laughs> Which some states will call it malt if it's over a certain level. Like Texas, if it's over 5%, they call it malt or whatever. So different states have different weird things. So I'm going to actually drink mine right from the can, but I'm going to try to keep it cool here for my buddies, my buddy Rob, who there's a video I have out there with the beer blizzard. But they created this little thing with some chemical inside of it. You put it inside your bottom of your can. And you put in your koozie to help keep it cool, but you know what? This is too small for this one because it's a bigger can than your regular oh, twelve ounce. So I'm not going to use that. Going with the craft beer pours and say we're drinking malt liquors. There you go. <laughs> but they actually came up with this beer blizzard, and if you ever watch Shark Tank, they went on Shark Tank, sold the idea to Mark Cuban, got a hundred thousand dollars, and are now basically all around the country at places like events and sports, all kind of stuff in. They sell these beer blizzards, and people put them in their stuff to keep their beer cold. Innovation all around, innovation all around. Have you tried it? Does it work? I did it when I did the video. I mean, it kept it nice and cold and everything for my time. I think the time they said like 20 minutes on a 20 ounce or I'm sorry, 12 ounce beer. So, which if you had a lager, you're probably knocking them out like that that quick anyway. Then when it says done, you put it back in the freezer, but they give you a pack of six so you can keep rotating them. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. A little, a little harsh. harsh. A little harsh. I'm doing this one for the people right here. <laughs> I feel like if, I feel like if I drink this so okay, I'm definitely gonna get diabetes. <laughs> diabetes. I get hit with the big yeah. dose of corn. Definitely, I, but what is the attraction with malt liquor? I mean, or malt beverages, or what did you pay for yours? Uh, this one here was like. I want to say like a dollar fifty nine, maybe or something. Wow! How much was yours? The Bud Light Platinum and drinking. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna freaking freak out, dude, when I tell you. <laughs> you don't, don't do it, Eric. Of, do it. Well, it's because you're paying for the Bud Light label here. Yeah. <laughs> Two twenty nine. Really? For just yep. a six percent ABV beer like that? Yeah, it's because you're paying for the Bud Light name. Yeah, that's why. Stupid fucking <laughs> <Andrew> bush. <laughs> mine, mine was two fifty nine. Two fifty nine with the that yeah, two fifty nine was about what it was here for the four local as well. Hey, Malt says you can tell by your face that you love it. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's not you know it's that's not very terrible. I mean, it, it hits you with that corn. I get a little bit of that syrupy type feel in there as well. But you know, it's a lager in a way, so it goes right down. Yeah, but. Yeah, this, yeah. One, this one almost just tastes like a soda. I mean, I love to, honestly with mine, my the Bud Light Platinum. I like this out of all the Anheuser Busch products because it tastes. I don't know. Like to me, it kind of has that sweetness level to me where I I like it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I drink my Miller Lights and Bud Lights, Coors Lights, all those. But every once in a while, I get this. I'm like, man, this is pretty damn good. But for two twenty nine, I don't think it's that good. <laughs> not 229 good. No, not 229 good. It is a 24 ounce though, so you are getting two cans for it basically. Yeah, true, but yeah. still, you're paying what a buck, <laughs> a buck ten for a 10 ounce or a 12 ounce can. Oh, uh, uh, you'll be paying a lot more than that come tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Would you rather get a can of something like this, or would you rather get a can of like an ice beer? Yeah, I, to me, if I were to get an ice beer, I'd probably, I don't know, I'd probably get Molson ice. Molson ice? Yeah. Have you had Genesee ice? Uh, I have had Genesee ice, yes, yeah. I have. I've had that one, that one, you know. Of course, my, uh, which is funny because we were talking about it earlier, so now, if I look on my channel, the third rated video 
you know, is actually the uh, Natty Daddy climbing the ladder. So that was one I did a while back, but people have been checking out, it seems, out there, checking that one out. So time to time, try to drink some malt beverage products. I almost got the uh, the Rita's, but I know if I wanted to try to deal with those or not tonight. So cause they had like I, five I almost got a Mickey Yeah. Yeah. Mickey Am I Ford really that. talking over you guys by chance or not? Are you talking over us? No, you're good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. I mean, I did look at the bottle. They did have the Colt 45 there and stuff like that or anything. But that's like just so, I don't know, just like so typical of drinking. Like, oh, I want to try something different. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. yeah. But they don't have, like, I know they didn't have, like, any of the bulls or stuff like that at our liquor store here. So. Oh, they didn't have like the Red Bull or the Blue Bull or the Gold? I didn't see either of those there. Um, and I actually went to, uh, I was looking to see if J.O. was there because I went to the party source on the way home to pick it up, but he wasn't around there. I was going to give him a shout when I was there. Um, but I was like looking for a while in the beer cooler. There's like nothing, there's nothing. And it was like six packs of Mickey's or some of the other stuff. And I'm like, they got to have like 40s or something around here or Tall Boys or something. And finally, on the way out in the front cooler, they had some of these in there. So. Yeah. I, I could have got Hurricane too. I know where I can get that, but yeah, I'm definitely getting. I mean, they a they bit all pretty much taste the same. They're that sweetness, and they don't have much hops to it to balance it out. And yeah. they're usually high alcohol. I'm definitely getting a little bit of the hiccup action with it, though. So yeah. <laughs> it's burning my stomach. <laughs> what do you think of it so far, Todd? It's sweet. It's sweet. It tastes like uh, I don't know. It's, I, I don't know if I can drink the soda can without it, like just tearing my stomach up. <laughs> <laughs> have you had this one before? No, I haven't had this one. Yeah. Well, you've had other ones or just not had that one at all? Uh, other malt liquors? liquors? Yeah. Other Four Locos. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, I've not had any of the Four Locos. Okay. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I thought about picking it up because I have not had it before. But yeah, just got it. Did they have other variants of the Four Loco tie? Uh, yeah, they had like a, I think they had a watermelon. Um, they had a grape one at our store. I can't remember. There was, there was four or five different ones, but I got that one because I thought, assuming that was the, just a regular base for Loco. I don't know. Is that, is the gold their base? Oh, go, keep going, Ty. I didn't mean to mention it. Oh, no, no. I was just wondering. I didn't know it. I, I mean, I don't know anything about them. So I saw a watermelon and I can't remember what the other flavors were, but. Uh, maybe the four loco gold was the base one of the four or five that they had. I think I can get their whole entire line of four local products here. What's it like eight or nine of them or something like that? Maybe I could be I don't wrong. Know how many nine. total are they have, but that probably I'm not sure. Few, they got a few amount of them. Probably five or six too many. <laughs> yeah. Ashley Sexton says the last malt liquor quote unquote beverage I had was the Colt 45 we did on the beer analysis 101. I'm still mentally recovering from that experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they uh they do some of that stuff on there as well. Um let me see here. So Eric Gilbert said, oh, are you kidding me? Brafuckton Salia says on for me. It's something he's got from some fancy place. Fancy pantsy. Um, head coach says, I'm watching a legend die. Just joking, it's not for me, bro. <laughs> oh, wow. wow! He says, Stop Mustang, and then head coach says, I wish Bum was here. Oh, well, which I'm surprised Bum's not here yet. Um, he might be running around. Uh, no, no, Malt Mustang, do we have to get like Colt 45s or Old English or something like that, man, for to appease you? <laughs> Bolt says, Are you wearing your mask, coach? Asking coach, he says, Oh, well. I, I don't know what you're talking about. And the moss says like why. So <laughs> just a little bit of babbling going back and forth, it looks like. Uh my buddy Jared from where I work, he's at Bud Light Platinum. Some crazy nice drinking at. So he's had the <laughs> platinum a few times. And then Eric asked him if he cared to share, which I'd be funny. Yeah, what a go to share, Jared. Uh I said it was a big <laughs> drink of choice in the college days. Wasn't too expensive. Yeah, Chief always works when you're in college for sure. Uh, Eric says my once choice of malt liquor was 
Labatt's Maximum Ice. Ooh, so Eric man. Santana. So I've never seen wow. that version of it. Have you have you had it before? Have you seen that there in Michigan? I've seen it. Out? I've seen it. I haven't had the guts to try it yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then Maul says Wordle Maul says Word on the Street is the is that fat idiot who does the Malt Liquor Report and Joe D show is going to try to drink a 40 of Red Bull in two weeks. You shouldn't call Bump. Don't call Bump fat. Bump's a good guy. So <laughs> but I know they all the Malt guys give Bump hell and stuff and Joe D's show and everything too. <laughs> is he the one who does the malt liquor report? Is that him? Yeah, Bum does, yeah. <laughs> And he takes it really, I mean, pretty serious. He he checks his facts and he gets stuff put together. And and wow. uh, it's pretty funny when you watch Joe D's show on Saturday night and they pull up some of the different malt stuff and the guys that are drinking. <laughs> I don't, that's one thing. Like, what well, malt Mustang might be able to explain to me. Like, I don't understand where every time I pull up a malt report or they, I'm sorry, they pull up a malt report or I pull up a malt video, people are always wearing a ski mask. I don't understand the ski mask part. Like, is it just to hide their identity? <laughs> yeah, I don't so get it either. Can recognize them. <laughs> But like every every video where there's like a malt liquor being drank, it's like they have a ski mask on. I'm trying to figure out why that happens. So hey, now, I would say I you hit the nail on the head. Yeah. Yeah. Now when I did malt yeah, liquor Mondays, I didn't put a fucking ski mask on. No, you were brave. You were right out there. This is me. <laughs> this is what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't like it, just don't watch. <laughs> All right, Maul. Don't 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 don't. <laughs> he says, he says, so Maul and head coach are going back and forth. <laughs> I guess like if anybody drinks enough beer, you're gonna be fat at some point. So oh yeah, if you drink <laughs> Bud Light Platinum, you're definitely gonna put the pounds on. Which is why it's important you get your workouts in there too. So, um, yeah. which I had to go to the office today. So I mean, I had to, you know, I actually got my steps in because I had my Fitbit on. At home, I don't pretty much get them in because I'm kind of just in my office, but there I'm running all over the place. So. Try to keep that Fitbit going after being inspired by Drunken One and PA Brew News, and they're out working out. Paul's climbing mountains. Is, how much weight has Paul lost? I don't know. I haven't asked him in a while, but he's probably down 20 or something, I would think, or at least. I mean, he was losing some weight, and he's doing some different walks and finding some different paths. And uh, Drunken One was down on the stuff that he was doing. Freaking uh, Craig, he's not here right now, but he's been like, off for like 20 something days he's going back to drinking tomorrow or saturday rather but he's been uh taking a hiatus from it and he's been like working out and stuff so i, gotta, I just like beer too much to lose weight <laughs> <laughs> well you can like beer or you can get the work you get the workout in so <laughs> so that you're kind of doing something to offset it and everything don't I do mean, the 12 ounce girls is what you're saying <laughs> Try not to. The twelve ounce curls eating a bologna sandwich on the trip. <laughs> like three and a half ounces. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beat that just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. No, well, hey, Eric says to bring back malt liquor Mondays, fools. Now, what malt liquor do you guys want me to do? That's the next question. You should bring it back. But well, then I have to go all the way back through all the malt liquors that I've done. You've you've reached a new level of uh, stardom because now you're being imitated on Malt Liquor Monday. You should have copyrighted that. You got other people like using that title. We're not saying any names, but the copyright is out there. Like, hey, that's my title. <laughs> you know, I've put this out there. Now you're running with it. Uh -oh. Yeah, man. If I mean, if other people want to use it, feel free, brothers. Feel free. Feel free. Yeah. <laughs> but we know who the originator is. We know who the OG is. It's you. Welcome to another edition of Malt Liquor Monday, fools! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. T couldn't have said it better himself. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, honestly, that's where I kind of got that from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Everybody needs to be saying, I do not own the rights to this, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of, well, say Mr. T make a weird different segue here but i just saw because mr t was in rocky and the rocky led to creed they got the creed 2 coming out i don't know if you saw the preview for that it's kind of interesting so the creed 2 trailer is out and it's basically apollo's son now is fighting drago's son in creed 2 huh i haven't even seen the first creed i didn't either but i know it was really good that a lot of people did like it and uh from what i've heard and everything yeah. the first yeah creed was pretty good i was surprised I'd mm -hmm. recommend checking it out if you like the you know Rocky franchise or whatever. Yeah. It's kind of a continuation of the story. I mean Sylvester Stallone is definitely milking that as much as he can. So Yeah. Yeah. 
with him now being a trainer or whatever. But uh, head coach is Team Apollo. <laughs> so he's down with Apollo there. Yeah. Uh, Eric Gilbert, yeah. Maximum Ice, baby. Um, I'll do Maximum Ice. I will do Maximum Ice. <laughs> he said he still hasn't seen Rocky 6. No, Rocky 5. No, I think it's 5. Is that an exclamation point after the V? Yeah, that'd be 5. And 5 you don't want to see. 5 is the one with Tommy Morrison. Not Tommy Morrison. Is it Tommy Morrison? Yeah. Yeah, that was just terrible. That was like yeah, that was three. Three. You skip that one. You watch Rocky Four and then you come back like with Balboa. Skip Rocky Five. Yeah, Don't yeah, you can cut that one out altogether. <laughs> and speaking of movies, um, on I guess on October or something, a couple of weeks they have Halloween Two coming out or Halloween, a new Halloween. Have you seen the trailer for that? Uh, I have not. I'm not a big Halloween fan, so yeah. But they actually, anything. they actually expect for that one to. Um, you're supposed to like watch it from Halloween one to skip all the other stuff they actually showed. Now you jump into the new Halloween, but Jimmy Lee Curtis is like a grandmother with a shotgun and stuff, so it looks kind of crazy. Yeah, I was gonna say, Eddie, she's supposed to be in that one also. Yeah, yeah, like pretty much the final showdown or whatever, but. I don't know. We'll see. It actually looks pretty good. Um, Witcher Kong was actually directed it too. Uh, the guy that did the show on HBO, um, Danny McBride. So, might have a little humor twist to it. We'll see. I was going to say the comedian dude? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the one that was, uh, what was the baseball huh. player's name he played on there? Um, uh, Down and Out? No, I not can't. that out. Yeah, I can't remember, I can't. What it was, but he's pretty funny. He had some pretty good lines on that show. Yeah, that was the name of it, wasn't it? Down and Out? Down and Out, yeah. No, that wasn't it, was it? Kenny Powers. Kenny Powers something. Let me see here. We need Joe to scroll through the comments, man. Where is he? Joe's <laughs> at the hockey game. I know he is. I'm just giving him. Oh, yeah. Now, we're, we're the really guys. Hold on. Hold on. He didn't want to come because we were doing malt beverages. And he goes, ah, now nah, I'm going to go to the hockey game. <laughs> yeah, it was eastbound and down. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah he's he's oh, actually watching the Sabres down. tonight. Yeah. Who are they playing? I don't even know, but it's the Sabres. So I don't even know if it matters, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, he's gonna see this. He's gonna watch us. And be like, "Hey guys, what's up with that?" Yeah. Uh, uh, it, it would be. It would have been interesting to see what malt beverage Joe would have picked if he'd have been here. Hmm. Probably would have been Mickey's or something too. He probably, he's probably not I think he it. said that Mickey's was the one he could he could stand. Other yeah. than any of the others, he couldn't. Yeah, but with the people that actually drink. You know, malt liquor or malt beverages. I wonder what uh, what you guys out there usually prefer when you actually drink it. And what's your attraction to the malt, the malt side of stuff? As far as comments out there, you know, what makes you try some of the different malt beverages? Or what do you like about them outside of getting drunk? I would have to, I would have to say the cheapness and the high EBVs. That's probably some top answer. Yeah. Yeah. Some people call it bum swill. I mean. The, Bum wine, you know, all those things. Yeah. There was one guy that was on YouTube. I can't remember who. Oh, it was at, um, he was out of Texas. Uh, I think he was out of Texas. You don't remember who it was? No, I, he might even still be on YouTube. I just haven't seen his videos in a while. God, what was, what was his name? It's, it's not important, I guess. But he always did malt liquors. He did every single one because he could probably get them. Yeah. I wonder how many malt liquor channels there are out there on YouTube. Well, I didn't see the blue and the gold in, where was it? Oh, Georgia. Yeah. I, I had the blue, but I didn't do a video on it. And I thought that was really, really good for a malt liquor. Really good. Yeah. Now, I had the, the I, you guys seen probably the gold bowl, which I didn't care for. Oh, Arabia Night says Shady Malt Shadows. Yeah, Shady Malt Shadows. That's who Shady it is. Yep. Shadows, rather. Yeah. Yep. Does he still do videos or is he done? Does he what? 
What Todd 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 videos are really done? I haven't seen any of his videos. I'll have to, to check him out, see what he does out there. Maybe <laughs> uh, maybe a night if you know if he does any of the videos. Eric Gilbert says the Sabres stink like my underwear after a hundred degree day. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's pretty funky. <laughs> <laughs> well, they can't get any worse than the Red Wings, okay? Yeah. <laughs> well, here's a question, like for some of the guys that are watching that drink malt liquor, who is like, who do you think out there is like your biggest malt liquor YouTuber? Like, who's the one that you guys always watch to kind of lead the way? Um, who's like the old the OG of the malt liquor YouTube world? <laughs> malt Mustang says Shady does still do malt liquor videos exclusively. Uh, he's done all of them. I gotta say, he's done all of them. Todd moving furniture. I think he went. I think he switched his phone. <laughs> but who is like? I mean, because I know Joe makes mention. I can't remember the guy's name, but he calls him like the chairman. Who's like the biggest, the biggest uh, malt liquor YouTuber? Be kind of curious to see. Check out some of their stuff. I I don't know. But Shady Malt Shadows does does malt Pretty liquor. Huge. I will say that he's. I I don't know how many subscribers he has. That's who some it is. Subscribers he has. Still, still worldwide. That's who it is. Seems like he's pretty big too. Who's that? Still worldwide. Still worldwide. All malt liquors. I'm gonna look him up while you're while you're doing your thing here. And then, uh, welcome, Turtle. Cheers, brother. Thanks for swinging by. And then, Malt said the chairman is still worldwide, the number one provider of malt liquor entertainment. So, he's probably the, he's the big one then. Okay. Looking him up right now. Yeah. He usually has a cameo on Joe D's show every Saturday. Like, they pull his videos with Bump Does Report a lot of the time. And then, uh, Arabian Night, do you actually do malt liquor reviews as well? Wow, yeah, he has almost 4,000 subscribers? Yeah, he's pretty big. Wow. Drunken One, welcome, my brother. <laughs> he says, sorry I'm late. You're probably restarting the computer, right? So. On <laughs> <laughs> his, his banner, he has himself holding a uh, Colt 45, four, or not Colt 45, an old English 40 ounce. And his wife yeah. is sitting there. Oh, I'm not even going to say what his wife is. He, you just guys got to look at it yourself. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to yeah, be anybody. Hold on, what is the video? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a uh, he's pretty big in the uh, the world there for uh, malt liquor. I see he still wears a ski mask because I've seen one of his videos there. Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, like I said, it's uh the ones I've seen for some of the videos, it seems like a ski mask. Even if it wasn't his, like some of the ones Joe D had pulled up, other guys had a ski mask on. So that was kind of interesting there. Yeah. When I do mine, I don't do a ski mask. I, I, yeah. I Not that I don't think it's silly or anything like that. It's I know it's all a part of the, you know, the, the silliness and all that sort of thing. But I just do it just to comment on the beer. I don't do it to be funny or silly or anything. But you always do label out too. Right? Yeah, label out, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Todd, what the hell are you doing? Are you like moving the kitchen table around? No, I'm trying oh, to get my. Everyone. I switched over to my phone so I wouldn't get the feedback. I could hear it on my side. Yeah. So, so trying where's, to get. Where's Shannon? where's Shannon? Is she working? Yeah, she's got. She's working. She got work tomorrow. Yeah. Tonight, tomorrow, then she's off. Tonight, tomorrow, and then she's off the weekend. There you go. She's not here to bust your chops tonight. Nah. Probably <laughs> next week. Probably next week, though. Yeah. <laughs> Are you doing it right? I haven't seen you drink in a while. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I'm, uh, it's, kill it's, it's, it's killing me. <laughs> Todd's putting herself. Don't, so, don't let him fool you. So he got sweet. up and he poured some out, Rod. No, you I didn't did. yet. I'm about, I'm about ready to switch it. over, though. That's why we couldn't see it when he was walking around the table. As, as, as Rod takes a big swig of water there. <laughs> <laughs> you got to cleanse the palate, Todd, okay? <laughs> the Arabian, uh, that's, what we'll, that's what we'll call it. Arabian Nights says malt, mes, malt Mustang is an Indian. And number two video maker is Jay Vega 419 according to Malt Mustang. 
Jeez. He, no, for malt liquor videos? Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to. So Arabian, Arabian and malt Mustangs, since you two are more in the malt world here, what are like your two, what are your favorite like malt liquor beverages you like to enjoy? Now he has 665 subscribers. Yeah. A nomad malt liquor assassin is what he's got. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is very carbonated. <laughs> <laughs> Todd's going to be hurt in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's already hurting now. Yeah. <laughs> Mary crack open an IPA. I just I don't know if I can do it anymore. I'm gonna have to drink that ice house edge, man, and get that out. <laughs> hey coach, what uh what game are you watching right now? Probably Colts Patriots. Oh, that's what I okay. And then Eric said the fancy essays on is damn tasty. I have to go clear this shelf. So he's going back to wipe them out. Did you get a good deal on that one, Eric, by the way? Like, Say that one more time, Ron. Well, not you, Eric. Eric Gilbert. Oh. He's, he's going back to wipe out those uh, the shelf of those Saisons he's drinking. So it's pretty good. All right. I'm tapping out. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> You're done? You're done with that one? That's as much as my gut can handle. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a malt beverage. A malt blessing is going to be on your case now, Todd. That's all right. How much of the can did you get through? That's about half gone. About half? Did you pour the rest out already? No, no. It's still here. I'll probably sip on it throughout, but I need a chaser. <laughs> <laughs> ain't going to lie. <sighs> and I know the warmer it gets, the worse it's going to get, but it's sweet. It's so yeah. sweet. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I wish I had just, wish I'd have just went with a regular old malt, malt liquor. Like a, <laughs> like a cold 45 or a Mickey's or something, but no, no. I had to go big. You don't like drinking syrup? What? Yeah. <laughs> malt Mustang says his favorite malt is Mustang Malt Liquor R.I.P. Was that really a malt liquor? And is that why you adopted the name for the uh, like malt Mustang? If it is, I never heard it before. <clears throat> and the Eric said, "Fill that carbonation burn." I think it was three dollars for three fifty-five milliliter. For what? For what one here, Eric? I think Eric might be doing the one on the saison. He's talking about. I thought he was talking about Todd filling the burn for a second there, but I, I think it's on his that he has hmm. a nice tasty saison. It's a burn. It's a deep burn. How, yeah. how was that uh, IPA treating you, Todd? <sighs> Very good. Thank <laughs> you. If I can quit belching <laughs> long <laughs> enough to drink it. <laughs> and Maul says, yes, it was real. It was it's my profile pick. Look it up. So I'll have to check that out. So have you been out of business for a while then? Or like how long ago was it since they were making like the malt liquor? I I don't know. Well, I was asking Mark because he's oh, since he didn't get out. Yeah. <laughs> Head so, coach says this is like watching the Sandlot kids chew tobacco. Instant free crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> good one, coach. Good one. That is a good, that was a good that's one. That's a good one. <laughs> so I yeah, guess now I'm kind of going to have bum, dropping down to your stuff. I guess I'm dropping Big down end. to session beer at nine point nine percent. He's like, go to a fourteen, and he go, I can't drink that. And then you go to a nine point nine. Yeah, but it's not <laughs> my di my sugar diabetes is went way down after that. <laughs> I, I'm doing it for the fans, just so I can continue on to next week. So I'm not putting in a sugar coma. <laughs> 
Eric Gilbert said Todd was the first half at well, but Mustang says coach always has a way with words, still making it well into the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have too much of a regret. It's kind of just like a throwback to old times. It makes me just think back to old memories, like I said, from softball or even like in high school, some of the stuff we would drink back then, some of the malt liquor. And mm-hmm. like, what was, what was like one thing you regretted drinking in high school? Do you remember? Oh, God. It was that tequila rose. Yeah. Oh, don't even get me started on that. Oh, <laughs> it makes me want to puke just thinking about it. <laughs> Don't so don't spit your beer out, Rod. <laughs> so for you, that was worse than drinking Boone's Farm. Boone, that's what I was going to say, Boone's Farm. <laughs> or Mad Dog 2020. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that tequila rose was um, – well, it's not that I didn't like tequila rose. It was the amount that I drank that got me to that point. Or uh, uh, Purple Passion. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine it. I, I've oh. – yeah, uh-uh. I'm not even gonna go there. Uh, maybe another time, but not tonight. <laughs> Make, makes your stomach hurt thinking about it, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, and I've been drinking a Bud Light Platinum. So that was like funny when you would go in, and you know, when you're in high school. And it's funny because we probably look at stuff still now, but like we go in high school to get alcohol, you're looking for the ABVs for the highest ones. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mm. But in high school, it was the highest ones at the cheapest price, right? So you were trying to maximize what you had to pay for it. Mm-hmm. Quantity over quality. Yeah. Yeah, we made some not best decisions, I say, back then. Oh, and, no. uh, well, you know. Well, you might, you both might be a little bit like I know Eric's a little younger than me, and Todd's Todd's you're probably you and Eric are probably around the same pretty much. But um, I just remember like back in the 80s, we just would drink this stuff, and we'd have like a high school party, whatever. You're drinking this, and you're sitting around watching like Faces of Death or something. And it's kind of like oh, Faces kind of, of Death, kind of a warped sense in the 80s of watching <laughs> drinking. <laughs> yeah, I think I got a couple years on Eric, maybe. Yeah. You don't have yeah, to agree with me, Eric. You don't have to agree. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh Faces of Death. I hadn't heard that in a long time. I was time. putting together a tweet, Todd, okay? <laughs> he was trying to focus. <laughs> <laughs> At least for a that, moment. That was uh, one of the craziest type of series ever put out, I think. When you can find that on there, that that just tells me a lot of people in the '80s were doing drugs to come up with something like that. You think? Can you can you actually find that out anywhere where you can actually watch it's that again? Probably on YouTube or something. You think? Right oh yeah, probably so. <clears throat> what, what were you talking about, Todd? I'm sorry. Faces, Faces of the death. Faces of death. Oh. Did you have that up there when you were a kid, like in high school, or people watching it, Eric, or were you? <clears throat> I think you guys might have been a little too. I mean, Todd knows it, but like in high school parties, we ended up sitting around watching that. <laughs> yeah. Damn crocodile pit. We didn't. <laughs> when we partied, we were out. I, I, can't, I grew up in the hits, man. We were out in the field partying, had a bonfire, doing stupid shit, blowing stuff up. Cow tipping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now you got to remember, I, w- I was in a part of a school that w- at the community was only 700 people. Your school was 700 people or the community? And I graduated with 43. Oh, were you a Quaker? <laughs> you a Quaker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, my alarm's going off. I'll be right back. My alarm's going off. I got to take my blood pressure pills. Yeah. <laughs> no, that is definitely a small community for sure. <laughs> 700 people, yeah. Yeah. That, that's that's definitely everybody knows your name kind of shit right oh, there. Yeah. Or when you screwed up something. Small town, news travels fast. Well, Mustang, oh. says, old, oh, Mustang says old memories or old non-memories. Head coach, King Cobra in high school still makes me sick thinking about it. Good old 1994. You know, speaking of speaking of face of the death, lol. <laughs> I, I have a story about King Cobra. 
when I when I worked at a convenience store, this one guy, every time after work, every time he would come in and he would buy one, only one, 40 ounce of King Cobra every day. Really? Every only day? one. And it, back then, back in the, when was it, uh, mid-90s, what was a 40 ounce back then? About like 99 cents, maybe? Uh, yeah, probably so. <laughs> Yeah, that cheap though. So I'm thinking when I was in high school, we were buying them in the '80s. We were like pay a few dollars. Really for a forty? Yeah, from what I remember, getting Blue Bull or Red Bull or one of those. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta, maybe it was, maybe goodness, I gotta remember. I thought it was ninety nine cents for a forty on the King Cobra back. I mean, then. maybe this, maybe they, I mean, the prices may have come down on them. I don't know. Eric, I'm thinking, so I'm thinking New, Jersey, thing. New Jersey. New Jersey was expensive for beer back then too. Well, I was in a little hit town of 700 people. <laughs> we didn't have a whole lot of dinero to pay on for beer. You were in a small town. Oh, small town like America is where I grew up. Like we were in New Jersey, we tried to get alcohol. And if we were too young to get alcohol, we couldn't go in and get it. So we had to find some guy in the parking lot where we're going to buy it for us. Who did you find? Like, could you find anybody? Because everybody knew each other in your town. Like. <laughs> you're like how did you pull it off to get beer like because you didn't somebody didn't know you or something well i knew a lot of the kids that would come in there and i'm like i'm like i'm like man i got cameras around here man just he's like well can you get me some gold slogger i'm like yeah i'll get some gold slogger I, and i charged him the price dude he was like who got the my, my boss comes in is like who bought the gold slogger i'm like i don't know dude there was someone i didn't even know <laughs> <laughs> Somebody Let's go to the footage. We're gonna check it out. <laughs> I'm yeah, sure he knew. How, how, I'm how sure did, he knew. But how did you buy it for yourself? How did you get it? I mean, oh, I, I you just were took you a little. The store you were able to get it, I guess. Well, I didn't take this. I only took a little half pints. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be a little inconspicuous little about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be a little inconspicuous. Put it in your back pocket. And... Yeah, just walk on out whistling, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd, I'd be stocking the coolers in the back, crack open a beer, but drink it while I'm putting the putting the rest of the stuff in there. Yeah, pop and all that. It was. I mean, it was all right. I mean, we never got it, being in small town America. We never got robbed or anything like that. Or you know, it's yeah. But you never had that super bad moment though either. <laughs> now, what what is a what is a super bad moment? You ever saw super bad the movie? No, I haven't. Oh, what? <laughs> <Very. laughs> Your high school, you gotta watch. <laughs> I haven't watched it. Now you guys are gonna be like, now I'm gonna have to watch it. McLovin, <laughs> you never seen the McLovin scene? You never seen McLovin. <laughs> no, oh. I haven't. No, uh, we gotta get Eric out of his sheltered life here. Man, <laughs> I'm not a big movie guy. I'm Was not. it seen like they're trying to get alcohol for the senior party and they're not <laughs> awake? So they have one of the guys that gets a fake ID, but it's like a situation where back in the day, if you're out there trying. I mean, you were waiting in the parking lot hoping to come out with alcohol. You never had that moment growing up. Like, we'd have to get a guy to go get his alcohol. We'd have to wait out in the parking lot and hope he came out and then take our money. You know, you couldn't really complain if he took your money because what are you going to do? You know, you gave him the money. He's like, you can't buy. You can't complain to tell the police. You can't tell the police. You're underage. So, yeah, I had I had a bunch of my classmates come in and be like, look, dude, can I get some of that? I'm like, hey, you give me the money. I'll pay. I'll buy. You can buy. You had a little cent one time. You had a little kickback out of that. If you'd have played your card. Yeah. And I said, "Look, dude, give me give me ten bucks and give me yours. Put an extra ten in there." Yeah, that's how you do it. <laughs> and I was I, and I was a fucking dumb kid, dude. I didn't even think of that shit. You'd have been big pimp. You'd have been big pimp at school doing that. You'd have been running at the, walking around like big in school. You know. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Eric, I need a bottle of soap. Come by at seven and bring the extra money. <laughs> I'll be waiting. You could have been rolling with it. Let's see here. Um, oh, going to the edge now. <laughs> nice. What is this one? 8%? 8-1? Mine is 8 even. Mine's 8-2, yep. Small. Here we go, boys. Small. Going back to the comments. Head coach said this is actually Face of the Death 2018 edition. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, things that I've read that a lot of the stuff on Faces of Death was simulated. Probably, I mean, it just 
it was so crazy. It probably was simulated, but we were just watching it in high school. Um, although when they beat that monkey to death and ate his brains, I don't know if that was simulated or not, because that actually is a delicacy overseas. Uh, some stuff was real, but a lot wasn't, he said. Uh, Rain on your parade, the Bell's Double Cream Stout was real good, but it's semi-new to Maine, so I'm working my way through their range. Yeah, so there's got Bell's up where Raiden is, so he's just starting to get into the Bell's thing. You should talk with Eric. Eric gets Bell's all the time, and Go yeah, ahead. I can get Expedition Stout. I can get the Bourbon Barrel Age Expedition Stout. I can get the Oracle. I can get Oberon, all that stuff. Rain and Parade. You got no love for me? What the hell? He said, you <laughs> chug, he said I should chug a 40 for the channel. What do I think? I think no. That's a no for me. Like, sign <laughs> That's a no. <laughs> hey. Next, next, week, I will, I will, next, week, next week, I will sip on a 40 just for you. Yeah. Who did we show last week do it? Oh, no. Um. So if you didn't see the video and I was doing a shout outs, um, I did this thing on Gee's channel. Gee chugged like three, like, I don't even remember, 14 or 15 ounce beers he poured into like a pitcher. Um, it was like 20 something ounces or whatever he did. That was something. He felt that the next day, though. He pretty much picked it up. But Wow. Chug I'm the just, whole thing? I've never done a chug video. Have you ever done a chug video, Eric? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 41 years old, right? I haven't done a goddamn chug video. Sounds like a Malt Monday. You just haven't done a video. <laughs> Sounds like a Malt Monday chug night. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Come that on, Eric. That would have to be a Saturday episode just because you would have to work the next day. So. Yeah. Now, head coach point. wants me to say toy boat three times real fast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what is that supposed to do. Say it. See what happens. Yeah. Well, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> the whole toy boat thing. So toy boat, toy boat, toy boat. There. Did it. Yeah. Tim's Tim's got a lot of them, and he's fifty-one. So he's like, man up, Eric. Tim. Tim does. Tim's we got some some chug videos. Oh, Tim's brew does. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you're more of a, you got bigger steel stones than I do, buddy. <laughs> Tim's not afraid to chug some beer. <laughs> and hopefully everything down there, Tim, by your way down there, South Carolina is cleared up. And I know you were okay, but hopefully any family and friends with Florence and all that stuff are okay by now, too. So I haven't talked to Tim in a while about that, but they had that stuff come through. <laughs> It was the Austria 14% box that Guy chugged. So he had three of them that he chugged, 14%. I don't know the milliliters without Joe being here. So I'm going to say almost 12 ounces. They weren't 12 ounces of 14%. It was a pretty hearty chug. God, what are you doing, brother? My phone fell. I don't, have my, I don't have my stand for it. Man, it's only 10 o'clock. It's like, do I get another one now? I actually went no. through this one. I thought it was. No, don't do it. Don't do it, Rod. <laughs> well, you already you already had two eight ounce, pretty much 12 ounce beers. Do you really want another one? Well, it's eight percent. It's like two of them. You you're on your second one. Yeah, but I'm sipping this one. I'm not chugging her down like I was a six percent. I don't gotta chug the other one. I can sip on that one too. Hey, I'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, done. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm just gonna go puke. Yeah, <laughs> I gotta pick up that fourth one. I want belly. <laughs> yeah. So I think do I go? Let me see. What do you guys? So like, I don't, I'm not gonna ask these guys because they'll say, "Yeah, get another one." Like, don't don't, don't don't ask that question. Yeah. Hey guys, want it, people in the comments and people who may be coming on here, once you hit that like button for Rod's video, smash that like button for him, buddy. Let's uh, let's get him some likes. <laughs> Thanks, man. And then, uh, you know, for some of the guys there in the comments, you know, check out some of these other guys' channels as well. If you haven't checked out Tim's, check him out. He does a lot of beer stuff there. So to the right of the name, you have the three dots. So you can check out Tim's Brews. And anybody else that has a channel out there, make sure you drop a comment to let people know to come check you out as well if you like, if you uh, want them to pop by and pay you a little visit, of course. I will and say the same thing for Malt Mustang. 
Malt doesn't have a channel, though, I don't think. If you have a channel, Malt, let me know. I don't think you had a channel last time. I, I, I thought he did, didn't he? Do you have one? I'm about ready to go check it out. Let me see. Does Malt <laughs> channel thing have a channel? Let's take a look. I thought he did have a channel. Oh, he's got 21 subscribers. <laughs> he's got subscribers. he got followers. But no <laughs> videos, but he's got followers. Hey, like there's, nothing, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Time hey, to follow. started out. What do you have? 51? Yeah. I've got some followers with no channel. <laughs> well, check out Drunken One because Drunken One has he has a channel. Drunken One, I don't know if he's done anything recently with alcohol, though. He's been doing a lot of other stuff, but always good videos to check out. Always the a good last time. one I seen with him, he was in some hotel room. Well, anything could have happened there with Drunken One. <laughs> that's all you need to say. <laughs> I didn't click on the video. All I see was a thumbnail. <laughs> It could have been anywhere from a to a sex act to a drug deal. You never know. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. That could go wrong in a hurry. <laughs> uh, he said Malt Mustang might make a video soon. Falstaff Brewing Company. Uh, Falstaff Brewing CO2 recently pissed me off, and I might have to respond. Oh, awesome. Yeah, definitely do it, Malt Mustang. So we can check out your channel and get you some support out there, too. Yeah. What did they what did they do that uh kind of pissed you off there? Kind of curious. Was it just uh bad beer or something you got from them or something they changed? Six year old IPA. Yes, it was like a six year old yeah. beer you picked up. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up again, Todd. <laughs> no problem, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> or are you have you have you worn any of your Brooklyn gear yet or anything? What's that? The little care um uh, Care package that Brooklyn sent you? Yeah, I've I've wore the hat a little bit and I've used the uh the bottle opener, but the band in I haven't used yet. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> well, I'm gonna go get another drink here, but I don't want to leave you a little guys. intermission here. What's a little it? intermission, but I don't want to leave you guys, you know, all by yourselves. So um maybe I'll just leave you talking with a few guys. From heaven, so you'll feel better about yourself here, and then you'll right. know you're off doing some pretty good things. How long are you gonna be around? Uh, just a minute. Hey, American Dream, Dusty right. Rhodes. Okay, Grant, a dream. Uh, it's an honor to talk to you again, especially after yesterday's events. Uh, I'm so sorry of the passing of you yesterday, the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. Wait, no, 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 no. Ah, first of all, I want to thank Crockett Promotions who did so much for me and my family. Yeah. All these years, up and down the highway. Yes. For a hard time, there was good times for Big Duck. But now, we're moving on to the next level. Up in here, working for a new organization. Really? What's the name of that organization? The PMW. What's that? Wow. So, and now who's got the strap right now? 
Some type of glitch thing going on, but anyway, I'm back. Now, so. <laughs> Just a word, a word from our sponsors, Dusty Rose. Uh oh, awesome. what do you got? What do you got? I'm just what feeling it. I'm gonna go for it. Mm, going all in. <laughs> Todd doesn't like. I can always stop if it gets real bad. But Natty Rush, Long Island Lightning. No, I haven't had that one. I did the watermelon. I did their. The blue, the it was blue something, and I did one other one of theirs, but I have I don't think I did that one. There's the malt beverage with natural, hey, natural flavors. How now, if any of you guys natural know flavors. that I do the malt liquid Monday stuff, I did probably the Natty Rush series, but I don't think I did that one. Check out my channel. Just type in Natty Rush in the um in the in the search bar, and you'll see my Natty Rush series. Excellent. Rod, once you take that leap of faith, there's no turning back. Sometimes you got to be a man to beat a man. Woo! <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. Malt Mustang said he disrespected a New York Mets magnetic schedule. Check out his latest video. Who are you talking about there, Malt? I must have missed something before. Oh, you're talking about oh, okay, Falstaff Bruins CO2. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Reno, my parade. I'm pretty jealous of the fine beverages you guys are displaying tonight. I'm very ready to crack uh Trappist Roach for eight. Been many oh. years at this. Wish I had a Colt 45 though. But that Roachford is pretty damn good too. I was so, gonna say what? Yeah. And the Droken one gave a big old woo. <laughs> the nature boy, Ric Flair. To crack. Release the crack in, son. Can you smoke out there? So it smells like iced tea, kind of. Like a Long Island iced tea. Oh, that's boozy. I haven't yeah. had that one. I had like the blue, the, the fruit punch, and there's one on oh, the blue. It was the blue, the red, and there was one other one. It wasn't that one. Oh. Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Look? Uh -oh. It's, it's like a Long Island in a can. It's got some ooh, it's got some potent flavor in it. That, that was the uh, that was the uh, bitter beer face right there. It's more than just, just more than just caramel color added. They added some other stuff in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All kinds of additives in that one. You're not gonna pour it in a glass and do a kind of a improper No, I should put it in a paper bag, but you know. <laughs> I'll have a Forrest Whitaker eye pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be in the morning. Well, I, should have, I should have said it about Forrest Whitaker. He's a good guy. Does a lot of good work. <laughs> I need to check it into my untapped. They'll be like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> People will be like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> He's on one off the deep end. I'm like, is this April 1st? What's going on? I get calls tomorrow. Did you lose your job? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need to go fund me, Paige. But speaking of Untapped, can you find is the do people follow you on Untapped? Can you see what people follow you? I get like invites to uh, people that ask to join me and stuff, but then I start seeing their stuff in my feed and everything. Why are you trying to get people to follow you now? Or well, I've you you know you guys seen the ones at Dimes where I was at yesterday, and I went down there and had a couple of beers and whatnot. And uh, there's there's a couple people that seem to follow me on there, but I mean there's only five right now. I'm on Eric's Beer Reviews on Untapped. If you guys want to follow me, just go ahead and give me a follow and 
you know, you know what kind of beers I'm drinking, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so the Natty Rush, Long Island Lightning. There's only been four ratings on Untapped thus far. Uh-oh. From Sierra L, she gave it a three. From Chris C, he gave it a point five. <laughs> that wow. <is> <laughs> It says his, even his cat didn't want anything to do with the stuff. Um, three and a half kind of came in from Dustin L. And then 3.75 from Adam S. So, but their overall score <laughs> right now is still zero because enough people haven't rated, I guess. So I'll be number five checking this one in. Oh. <laughs> It's funny because it has like a little bit of a Long Island iced tea feel to it, but it's got that sweetness with it as well. So, yeah, but Rod, you can't make that face if you take a drink. (laughs) I can make the face and I can still give it a B (laughs) plus. That's a real man status right there. (laughs) Um, let's see here. You guys are probably going to get a notification on your phone from me about the Ice House Edge. Oh, okay. The uh, rating your parade says the price you pay for that. I guess that's doing it for the fans. Um, Eric says got some kick. Yeah, it definitely does. Um, Tim said, did I did you see Connor McGuire MMA man got a scotch out? No, I didn't know that uh, Connor had a uh, Connor McGregor had a scotch out now. Has a scotch? Yeah. Mark, thank you, buddy. Huh. Thank you. What happened? Mark uh, asked to be my friend on Untap. Thanks, buddy. Uh, there you go. Everybody needs a friend. Friends, <laughs> you're all that I need. <laughs> and that's the malt liquors. That's the malt liquor talking right there. <laughs> Mark as low as you can go, right? <laughs> No one could ever do is worse than Bismarcky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he made a, his money. That was a hit back in the day, like an out of key tune that <laughs> yeah. it gave everybody hope that they could be a, a, a it kind of shows you so, so bad it can actually be good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you're gonna be bad, just go all in. And then Tim said he got his own brew now, too. So, talking about Connor, I think. Connor hmm. McGregor has his own beer? That's what Tim is saying. All right. Hillbilly, man. what? In the house. Hillbilly, what, what malt liquor do you get down with or malt beverage? Because we want to say malt beverage, otherwise, malt must going to tell us it's not malt liquor on the can, which it's not. It says malt beverage. When that now, flavors. Ice House Edge here says. I thought they all said malt beverage. I didn't say it on my ice house edge, but if you look that look it up, it's considered like that though. It, it doesn't say on here, but if you go to like Untapped or uh, Beer Advocate or Rate Beer, it'll say malt liquor. <laughs> Is there actually a difference? Well, I know with like malt beverage or certain levels in certain states. They have to call it malt over a certain ABV, which doesn't make any sense. Really, it's still beer. Yeah, I think Texas has ale or something like that. Well, I mean, no, like these malt beverages, the flavor and stuff like that. It's not technically beer, but then the beer sites allow you to put stuff on there and rate it. So, but this is a yeah, this is like a one for me. A one and done. Well, one on the scale, one to five. I mean, it's kind of not really great, but. Um, in the words of Samuel L. Jackson, it'll get you drunk. <laughs> <laughs> for cheap. Dave Chappelle playing Samuel L. Jackson, but yeah. English, MF, or do you speak it? <laughs> oh, and if you haven't seen, I mean, depending who, you, whatever side you're on, it's still a pretty damn funny video. They did a, they did a, a mashup of Jules, Samuel L. Jackson playing Jules. At the Senate here, interviewing Brett Kavanaugh. That was one of the funniest things. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty damn funny. I will admit, I did like him on the the Capital One commercials. Him and Charles Barkley, and who was it? Uh, Spike Lee. Spike Lee, yeah. yeah. 
Oh my god, I wish they would bring those back. Yeah, those yeah. were pretty good. I they remember had, the they did those during the NCAA tournament, though, right? That's the only time they showed those, wasn't it? Well, they've been doing it for a couple of years with him, Barkley, and uh, Spike Lee. Spike Lee, yeah. But Samuel Jackson was doing it for a few years by himself, too. And I remember the first ones he came out, it was like coming off of some of the stuff he was used to say because. Let's all face it. Samuel Jackson probably says the F word better than anybody in the business. So <laughs> he couldn't stay on a commercial, but he said something. And it was like, what's in your damn wallet? And I was in the commercials that were the early ones. And they pulled it like after a few times airing it. Like, <laughs> really? And, really? Yeah. If you look, go back and if you can see one of the early commercials, when he first started in Capital One, he had damn in there. Because everybody was used to Samuel cursing and stuff. So. And it fit his personality, but they're like, mm, we can't really do that one here. Now. Come on, so, man. Yes. Sorry, Sam. Can't do it. Come on, America. Quit being can... pussified. <laughs> Let me see if I can if I can find it on here. I'll pull, I'll pull it up here. I, somebody, I do remember that one. Yeah, it was like one of the first ones, and then they kind of cleaned it up after that. Uh, yeah, see, here's a post here back in 2013. Let me pull it to my screen. 2013? Here. Wow, it's been that long? Yeah, yeah, he's been doing it for a while. And I'll share it to the screen here. It's only been five years. God, I can't believe it's been that long. So Capital One cleans up Samuel Jackson ad after damn and criticism. But in this commercial, he'd actually said, damn, for what's in your damn wallet. What is in your motherfucking wallet? <laughs> I would have I I got sold some credit cards. <laughs> Dude. Dude, yeah. I want to just hear it? that once where he said, what's in your no, motherfucking that one wallet? You know, some of these sites they make you sign up for it now to see the article, which really sucks. Like I remember when the internet gave you shit. Not enough. Which the every damn. Let me see if this does it. This might do it on this commercial. Let's see if he says it on here. I'll probably get a flag for it or something, but who cares? Tim Not like Bruce it says if you, YouTube Tim, can't monetize. Rod mm -hmm. Tim Bruce mm -hmm. says if you check out the party source, there the first mm -hmm. they're the first to show it. The show, the Samuel Jackson. I think that's what he's talking to. Let me see. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to settle down there, son. <laughs> <laughs> talking. Let me see if I can pull it up here. Oh. <sighs> Hold on. Motherfucking snakes on a motherfucking plane. Let's see here if he says it here. 1.5% cash back on every purchase everywhere, every damn thing. Now tell me, what's in your wallet? He didn't say the damn there, but he said the damn in the other part of that one. Yeah. There was one where he said, like, listen, you're damn well, I remember. What's a new motherfucking one? Yeah. I went to school for advertising. I kind of remember muscles being out there. What fucking cards in your motherfucking wallet? <laughs> exactly, Todd. I'm surprised he didn't say that. Be like, <laughs> maybe like um, snakes on the plane. Too many damn fees yeah. in this card. <laughs> <laughs> The motherfucking that, snakes on the motherfucking plane. That movie, like you're watching that. If you if you've seen snakes on a plane, you're watching the whole time. You're just waiting to get to that point when you know he's going to say that at some point, and they oh, know it. They <laughs> know he is. No, he is. It's like three quarters of the movie before he finally gets a saying. Everybody's like, "Yeah, <laughs> <on the> <laughs> yeah." Everybody, all right, we can leave now because it's no yeah. good. <laughs> just waiting around for him to say that. It's like, thanks for pointing out, Sam. I don't know what's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Kick their ass. <laughs> uh, Let me see here. Check some of the comments. And 
Hillbilly wine is in the house. Yeah, we covered Hillbilly. That's what happens when you drink malt liquor, Eric. You forget <laughs> shit. Thanks, Todd. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. <laughs> Eric Gilbert says, get into some Ezra, Bro Ezra Brooks 101 and Paul Inner Salvatore. Nice. Got a little double stuff going on there. Raynan says, have one of those 12% four locals years ago on the way home from a beer trip in Mass. The buzz off that really put me in a mood to F stuff up. <laughs> that, was a, that was my edit there because, you know, <laughs> I can say, I can say, I can see why they'll sell, pour that shit over ice. So, yeah, they, um, for a while, they weren't selling them in some spots, but I guess I was talking to some of the guys that work today. They took the caffeine out of it that used to be in it, too, that really got the amped up. So, uh, it Tim Bruce feels like it has caffeine in it. Yeah. And then Drunken One says, Brother Philly Wine 101. Yeah. Does it have what in it? Caffeine? Not now. I think they reduced it. They used to have more in it than it actually did, and they changed the formula. Well, I don't know if they had it in the gold, did they? It doesn't say anything about caffeine on the can, but. Yeah, that might be the newer stuff they do now. It tastes, it, it felt like a soda with. Alcohol in it. Tim said Tim was talking about check out the party source that are first to have it, talking about the scotch that Conor McGregor came out with. So that's what Tim was talking about there. Hey Foamy Head, what's going on? He said he's having a Cholo Stout from Marble Brewing. Cheers, brother. And then Tim says, Hillbilly, drunken one. It's like, are you there? Come back. And four, big buddy. We never did talk about the passing of Burt Reynolds. I mean, that was a classic for smoking a bandit. Yeah. I had Coors and I drank drank a six pack in his honor. Yeah, yeah. You did an honor, did you do a video on it? Drinking the Coors to Burt Reynolds? <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> it's kind of funny, like when they did the smoking abandoned movie, and they were bootlegging Coors from Texas to Florida. And it's like now you look at it like Coors? You were taking Coors there? Like but if you had to bootleg if you had a bootleg of beer nowadays cross country, which one would you probably bootleg? Like, what would be a good bootleg? Like, would it be like something like Pliny the Elder because people can't get it, or would it be something like Trillium? What 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 is big on the East Coast or big on the West Coast that you would bootleg across the country? Well, Pliny's on the West Coast. But what would you bootleg Trillium. on the East Coast? Maybe Trillium or Treehouse or? Yeah, yeah, but I guess would it be one of the ones, or would it be like maybe one of the more mass appreciated type beers too i don't know that's a good question yeah like if you had to bootleg a beer across the country what beer would you bootleg a narragansett 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 lager but back then it was like cores was like one of like 10 different ones or whatever which is really astounding like when i was reading and doing some research on beer back in the uh mid 80s there were only like I think like 36 breweries in the country compared to yeah. where it is now. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah, I, I mean, I still like a Coors Banquet every now and again. I'll buy a uh, six-pack of 16-ounce pounders and, you know, enjoy them and all that. But some people are like, in, in the big craft beer movement, they're like, man, I can't drink that stuff. And I'm like, you know, it's, just, it's all what? beer, man. It's I had a Coors, uh, what is the goal when the Coors um, – is there a name for that one? It's the gold label one. The it's extra different. gold? Yeah, maybe. It was on draft, but we were at one of our bars, and they had like a 25-ounce for $1.99 or whatever. I had was it, craft was it, was it a, like a tall can, a gold tall can? Well, it was, it was on draft. Oh, on draft. It might have been, it might have been Coors Banquet. Might have I was going to say, isn't that the banquet? It was Coors Banquet, yeah. So, And it wasn't bad. I mean, it was just, you know, your, your typical like macro-type lager, but – I said, why not? They'll be cores, and it was a hot day because it was like back in uh, July, and it was fine. It went down. Now, so. now, to me, to me, Rob, that's one of the better macro lagers. That, yeah. my, that's all my, my own opinion, obviously. Yeah, I remember being back in college drinking like cores light at times too. I mean, yeah, we used, to, we used to drink MGD back then as well. I couldn't stand. I can't stand MGD even now. I can't. Yeah, yeah, cores light, then you know it's okay. Yeah. 
compare, you know, in comparison to the other macros or whatever. So when you first started like drinking, like what was like, if I think about it, cause like what was the worst beer I drank at that time? It would have to be the beast, like the worst beer. I, mean, uh, I, I can drink some beast light. I know yeah, the light, the light's not bad. Yeah. Well, the regular beast is what we were drinking. Oh, the, the four, what, four, eight? I don't know what it was. It was just like you get like a case of it for like $8 or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Buy one, get six free. Case no, buy one, get 12 free. <laughs> At the point, you really didn't have to taste it as much. It get a baker's like, dozen. Get a baker's dozen. It was like we're heading to a party. Come on, guys. we got to hurry up so we all start shotgunning them. You know? So you really weren't tasting it as much either. Just get it into your system. It's probably the way to drink it. <laughs> he was doing it the right way. Tim had made mention that, man, he wanted he wanted a Trans Am. We were talking about smoking the Bandit like that. Which was a nice T-top Trans Am, but I Trans Ams were good, but then when the IROC came out, I used to want one of those back in the 80s. But then when it came out to Grand National, it was like, I want a Grand National. You better be um, paying the big bucks for that. Well, yeah, when the time I could actually buy the car, they stopped making them. So it was like, because the police couldn't catch them. They made them, they made a Buick order stop releasing them. And had then it, those things, so they, like the guys here where I'm at, that works out of the gym I go to, he has one. He's got like I think he last told me last time like twenty thousand miles on it. It's an original that he had for oh, back. Wow. He doesn't drive it out only for certain things, uh, but it's like twenty uh, twenty thousand, twenty five thousand original miles on it, and it is freaking pretty sweet. It is pretty sweet. So, I had a friend that had a Grand Ryan. National. Yeah, and had it with with nitro boost in it. Oh my god! Yeah, you talking about get up and go, buddy? That sucker would fly. Yeah, you're like hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, did, did you get a ride in? Did you get a ride in it? Oh yeah! Oh, oh yeah! No, I didn't. Oh yeah! yeah. No, Todd, yeah, on his, yeah. 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 I bet that was fun. Yeah, we take it on some of the side highways that you could go in, you know, at nighttime and boom, just hit it and be gone. We've got, we've got a couple of the racetracks around where we're at where you can actually run your cars out there. Like you have days where you can bring your car out to drive laps on the track, and a lot of people would do it like with the new Chargers and Challengers and all that kind of stuff. But to get a Grand National out there, would be pretty freaking awesome too. Oh wow! Yeah. Ron, what's your do they do they charge you to do that, or you can just go out there and do it? I mean, you pay like you know twenty five dollars or whatever, but you can because on the road you'll never get it up to the full maximum. Like when they came out with the, they brought the Chargers back. One of the things they would always write about was saying it's sad that people would never experience how much of a boost they can get with this car because the speed limit. You know, you you can easily. Right. When I first got the Charger, I had, you know. It, I was up at 110, and you weren't even feeling it, really. You were just, like, on the highway, just taking it out there. And it was like, I could have easily took it out further. And it was like, you started getting nervous. Because then when you're older, you get nervous about getting tickets. So you get yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, shit. You're, young, you're not worried about it. You're pushing it, like, every time. <laughs> yeah. When I was in high school, I ran my mom's cut with some night and didn't even think twice about it, you know. You know I think my head, I had my mom's Bonneville up to 115 once. Yeah. And yeah. that was scary. I'm like, holy shit, dude. I'm fucking hauling ass. <laughs> <laughs> and You're I, passing the of the road like zoom. And zoom. that was like 18. I'm like, and I'm going down I-94 going towards going going east towards Jackson. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? I'm like hauling ass. I'm like, I'm done. Done. At least you were on the highway, you had space. When I took my mom's uh Call of Supreme up to 110, I was on a back road, two lane back roads with holy buddies. Shit, dude. Yeah. It just came back from watching like the fly when Jeff Goldblum the fly came out, and they were like saying they were challenging me, right? They're like, I bet you can't get your mom's car up to 110 or because the speedometer showed like 140 or 150 or whatever. I said, All right, so we went back there, and this was like at 11 30 at night, too, so it was dark. <laughs> and, um, part of South Jersey is like farm country, but a lot of people don't realize that. So we're in the back road, and I start going, I get up like 70 and 80. And they're like, all right, you can up there to get it at nine. Okay, you start bringing it back down. We're just playing, blah, blah. Like, no, you want to go 110. Let's go 110. Get to 100. They're starting to freak out in the car. I get up there, and by the time I stop, I just stopped at the four way intersection just in time and not went through it. It was like not the smartest thing to do. And I don't encourage anybody to actually do that. It was a different time back then. There were less cars on the road. We had open road. We could do stuff. But nowadays, you know, someone would probably wreck or something. <clears throat> I used to have a Kelly Supreme too, Rod. <laughs> yeah. You could run those babies. That engine was good in it. You could definitely get those. I one of my old teachers. He was a uh, he had a Monte Carlo SS, and he used to like on the weekends go drag race against other people for extra money and stuff. What 
What year was your? What year did you have for the Cutlass? It was the yeah. That would have been like in '86, so I think hers might have been like a '82 or '83 or something. I had an '84, '84 yeah. Cutlass Supreme. How far is how did you take that one up to? And I, I, I don't think I ever got it over a hundred. That was like one of my first cars when I was, you know, just getting wet behind the ears. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I probably, you know, I don't know, 85, 90, maybe. <laughs> my first car that I ever got was the Isuzu. I've ever bought for myself was an Isuzu Stylus in college. And they don't make those anymore, but that wasn't going 110. <laughs> 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 that's, like, that's like today's Prius or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> getting passed up by the lady in the wheelchair. <laughs> the fastest I've ever gone in a car is in a Dodge Super B, a four Ooh, speed. Yeah, I forgot about the Super B. Yeah, a four speed. We went one seventy. Yeah, that's 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 hauling. And I'm like, oh, and, and the silent light. We were going so fast, the silent lines were solid. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay, okay, man, it's time, it's time to slow down. It's time to slow down. <laughs> <laughs> well, Eric Gilbert says he will boot like ten fifty. Would that be regular 1050 or would it be the bourbon barrel aged 1050? No, I, I never had bourbon barrel aged 1050. I still have it in my thing. I got to still do a review on it, but it's downstairs now. It's in my new air beverage cooler right now, as a matter of I've fact. I've never it's had it. Day. I never, ever had it. I want to try it, but I never had it. Yeah. And a good thing about, like, actually, I will say having that cooler now, I can set the temperature. Like, usually we'll get a beer and we'll let it sit out or whatever. But now I can guide the temperature where I want it at. And it cuts down the time. We have to wait for something, too, because I know what the temperature is coming out, which is nice. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Um, Tim says, I thought Tim said something here. Well, Tim said, yeah, we got them out here too. Um, talking about, I'm going to talk about the 1050 or Moonshine. Oh, Tim said, if I was going to boot like something, it would be Moonshine so I could make some money, LOL. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, South Carolina, there probably are some Moonshines. I know. We got some here in Kentucky. And now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is it bootleg Moonshine or is it like the commercial Moonshine? No, you'd be bootlegging the actual Moonshine, you know, take it through the woods, drain it, yes. do everything. And yeah, you got to, if you're going to bootleg Moonshine, it better be the real deal. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah, it better it be, be the real deal, type. dude. Yeah, people will not take that, you know, commercial type stuff lightly. So, Roger, never did answer your own question there. What would you uh, bootleg if you had to? I was going to bootleg a beaker. I have to think about that. There, I didn't. I didn't even think about my own question there. Really. So, so would it be like a uh, a beer that you can't get that you would go drive across country to bring back home just to have, or what would be? Like just a case of it. What would the deal? Would what's the deal? Like, like? I want to be like a good, a good beer that a good amount of people could enjoy. Because if you're bootlegging a bunch of beer, you're probably going to a party, so everybody would enjoy that type of beer. <laughs> have a good, True. But you want to have something you can share, and people can actually enjoy and kick back with, have fun, um, nice taste that they can all get from it. It probably have to be something like a wheat type ale, maybe. Um, I know yeah, Joe would probably hate it. I mean, some, something like an Oberon, like people would all pretty much like from different areas and stuff that they don't get everywhere, you know, would be something like not a bad beer to do. Because if you get like a pale ale, not everybody's going to like the pale ale. Right. Thing too. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely not a shandy. Yeah, I, mean, I would not bootleg. Yeah. Would, that would, would you be, be thinking about shandy. everybody else? You'd be like, if I'm bootlegging it, like, I'm, I'm bootlegging getting it. something for myself. Yeah. Now, if I'm taking a, you know, if I'm taking a price cut, you probably want to be a marquee beer. So then you might say, well, then in that case, I might do like a treehouse or I might do a Pliny because you have to pay extra top dollar for that. You know, so depending on the situation, what I'm looking to do, if it's to make some money off of it, then probably one of those top ones. Because then if you got caught, it made it worth the risk. Right. But if you're just going to a pate, then it might be something a little more <laughs> everybody can enjoy. But uh says, Malt asked me, Rod, weren't you worried about a cow jumping out in front of you. No, actually never <laughs> thought about it, but where we were at, it could have been definitely been a possibility, or it could have been a raccoon, it could have been a deer. Well, You're I, young. I, I, You're I have like 17 years old. We weren't thinking about it. At 17, people think they're immortal, right? So, <clears throat> I mean, you understand, we would actually drink things like this, and we used to drink at a place like that was like an old, almost abandoned building, and we would drink 
think, and we would climb up on top of the building, and go up in the roof and chill in the roof at night. And you had to scale from the outside. Like one of the guys almost pulled a, a shutter and almost fell from the second floor. I mean, so we would do crazy stuff because we were wow. kids back then. And we just didn't think about it. We thought, you know, we had no issues or whatever. So, Right. You're, you're invincible. I mean, like you had a small community where you're at, but your area was like kind of a little bit of a rural area, right, Eric? Yeah. Yeah, so ours wasn't ours was bigger than that some, but it was still like a rural type area in New Jersey where we were. So we would do all kinds of crazy stuff and have fun and you know, stuff that we probably shouldn't have done. But we were young and growing up. We didn't stay in the house and just play Xbox and Playstation all day or text people, <laughs> talk to people and communicate and did things outside the house, you know? It's called having a life. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but we did play video games when we came back in. <laughs> Street lights come on, it was video game time. Yeah. But back then, you know, parents parents would be like, You need to get out and go somewhere. And you'd be like, I don't know anywhere to go. Like, well, you gotta go out of here. They would yeah, you know, out of here. That's what they said. Out of here. You'd be in the front step, like, I don't know what to do. And they like, go figure something out. <laughs> that's right. <Yep. laughs> don't come back till the light comes on. I, I tell my daughter that all the time. I was like, when these kids, you'd leave at like 10 o'clock in the morning. You wouldn't get back until it was dark or after. Right. But you well, would go out there. It was like 6 or 7, and then you wouldn't, wouldn't get back till maybe midnight, 1 o'clock. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we do that too, but. But you would go out there, you would do sports, or you would do, you know, if you were young and you'd make a Ford, or you do, you find other ways to be creative out there, too. Yeah. So. Self entertainment. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of, I think, some of the kids need more of that nowadays and stuff. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I think they're not as involved. Like, like some of the schools now, gym is optional. Like, when is gym ever optional? Yeah. When did you not want to take gym? Gym was always fun, but it's different now, I guess. Yeah, if you don't get humiliated not climbing the rope, the rope, the rope ladder or whatever, climb because you yeah. couldn't make it all the way up. I mean, you wasn't living. You're not living. <laughs> I mean, he comes, comes home. They're like, "Hey, Dad, I got a D in gym." <laughs> yeah, what? how the hell did you get a D in gym? You go in, you put on your shorts, your T-shirt, you run around. How did you get a D? <laughs> Every time you took a step, I mean, how does that happen? It's amazing. It's like, and then some kids are just like they opted out of it. Like opted out of it. Oh, it's, it's a different time for sure. I always look forward to gym. Yeah. <laughs> no, we could not have it if we were in sports. Uh, no, no. Really? With a, not you? To opt out of it? Yeah, opt out of it for like a basketball or football. They'd be your PE requirement. No, you never opt out of gym. But I mean, I don't know. When I was in school, I was like always one of the first kids taken a lot of the time, too. So we played mm-hmm. football. But like, <laughs> and it's cruel now when you think back of it. Well, you remember like you were in school and it's like, okay, Eric, you're there. Todd, you know, we'll take Todd. We'll take Roddy. We'll take blah, 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 blah. You take all these players. And then it's like the last couple of kids are like, the coach steps in. Okay, you go here. You go, no, 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 no. They can have both. They can have both of them. We're okay. <laughs> yeah. We'll take two. We can have the other two. We're good. Chances are those two kids you passed on are probably running some million dollar corporation now. So. <laughs> exactly. But they were not good for kickball. They just weren't. They weren't good for kickball. Couldn't use them. <laughs> right. Out there like Mike Singletary. Mike Singletary in the 49ers speech. Can't win with them. Can't win with <laughs> <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> I'd rather have 10 good guys that can play than 11. One that won't, so, you know. Yeah, you know, you, you say that. It, it, it makes me sad driving through my old neighborhoods. Like, you don't see kids out doing anything anymore. Like, yeah. when it's kids, you just look for the house that had all the bikes in front of the house. You knew that's where everybody was hanging out at. Mm-hmm. Well, like, we talked earlier about the sand lot. Like, you went up there, you got base, you played yeah, baseball. And yeah, you know, the Kids, you try to, well, let me go check someone's house. Let's go see what Ricky's doing or blah, blah, blah. You go grab these other kids and get them to come out and play baseball or whatever. I remember riding a school bus home, and you're like, all right, 3.30, side of the churchyard, you know, side of the church, out right. the yard, tackle football. No pads, no nothing, and you're just out there trying to kill somebody. Yeah, and there was a time where you hated when the light came on. Oh, yeah. You, like, knew, like, you would try to, like, get extra time out there to hear your mom or your dad call for you or something, and it's like, shit. Yeah. 
tomorrow. I'll be back tomorrow. We will finish this. <laughs> five more minutes. Exactly. Five more minutes. <laughs> Come on, Come on, five on. more minutes. <laughs> it's amazing, you know, how it is now. Like you don't have some of that stuff out there, but you know, it is what it is. But you know, you see some of the stuff, and I think they've tried to start countering it. But like some of the kids that were putting on the extra pounds, all that kind of stuff, because they weren't active, they just weren't involved in a lot of the stuff. But for a lot of parents, you know, sports has cost a lot of money now. I mean, I can't imagine nowadays, like you know. People I know that have to get stuff for their kids, and it's like this and this. It's either like two, three hundred dollars for equipment or stuff, and it's just like it's almost become too commercialized on the kid level. Like everybody has to have the hot, you know, LeBron shoes, or they have to have the yeah. hot, you know, Zeke Elliott cleats or whatever. And it's just like, dude, if you got the yeah. talent, you'll come through with your out, out there. So, all right. But yeah, uh, I remember, I remember, it was a couple of years ago. I was leaving my mom's house, and there was a couple of kids out in the street playing. Like a one on one, you know, all time quarterback, touch football out in the street. I pulled over and rolled my window down. I was like, Good for you guys. And they looked at me like, Move along, old man. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, You don't see that anymore. You know, I was like, Good for you. It's like you're holding up the game, old timer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were like, Move along. It's like, I used to roll the street back in the day, you know? <laughs> like, Yeah, whatever. You're interrupting the game. Just keep going. I was getting out of the car with the Al Bundy story about the four touchdowns. <laughs> yeah, three touchdowns. <laughs> when I was at Polk High. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but good for you for recognizing the kids and everything. Um, let's see. So the comments here. Eric Gilbert said, Year One Wheels does a custom smoking and bandit wheel for the Trans Am. Um, let's see. Mustang 1960 Chevy Course Air, baby. Just don't turn too abruptly. Yeah, cause they would they would flip on you. Um, James, what's happening, brother? He says, we got a long way to go and a short time to get there. We're going to do what they say can't be done. You guys know that one, right? Say again? Say again. We got a long way to go and a short time to get there. We're going to do what they say can't be done. You know what song that is, don't you? Drawing a blank. Oh my God! You guys are not true smoking the bandit people. <laughs> you need to go watch smoking the bandit again. Eastbound and down, like that's smoking guy. the bandit. It's Jerry singing. We got a long way to go, and a short time to get there. They so gonna oh, say yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, you got to know you're smoking the bandit trivia. That's a long time ago. If I get on, uh, <laughs> if I get on, what's that show with? Uh, uh, well, it's not Regis now. It's somebody else. But it's like, I can't phone a friend of you guys because you will not help me on the trivia if I ever get on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't call, don't, don't call me, Rod. I don't want to lose you a million dollars. Eric Gilbert says, regular but not picky. The fastest I went in the car was a BMW Batmobile tarmac rally car on the Mossport Road Course. How fast did you go, Eric? Um, Malt Mustang, tell Bum to message Havana. That's what Arabian said. And Tim's Brews, you got that right. I never played video. I was making money at 10. See, Tim was a businessman. He was a businessman back in the day. So Tim's Brews was out there getting some of that cash. Like, you know, Eric, you could have gotten cash off that override for the alcohol. Tim was out there making money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't have kids come by and knock on your door anymore to cut your grass. Or like when it snows, the plow. Like we used to do that when we were kids. Yeah, I remember. I remember one time me and my buddy was uh, it was in fall, so we just said we're gonna go rake some leaves. It yeah. took us like three days to rake this lady's house. We got like five bucks a piece and a can of coke. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Like that, that even happened? That, my friends, is child labor because you did the wrong house. <laughs> yeah. Child labor at its finest, right there. It's like, get off the school bus, go rake leaves till it got dark. We'll be back tomorrow. And just got like $5. Like, what? Come on. So we're, it's October, so Halloween will be upcoming. What was the worst thing you ever got on Halloween? Worst thing? Like, you, you, you know, you're as a kid, you go home, you have your basket out. An apple. An apple was the worst yes, thing? Yes, an apple. Yeah. What about the. Uh, 
the rolls of pennies. They didn't bother you. I never got those. I never got them either. You said like it was basically like here's a roll of penny. Go buy your own candy, kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, you think that, that's just like a lazy gesture by somebody, you know? Like ah, here's money. Go buy your own. Like lady, I can't just get to the store. I'm a kid. <laughs> <laughs> right. How many pennies do they have to have to give every kid that they came up to a roll of pennies? Right, and they would go and they get these rolls of pennies from the bank or whatever, and they'd hand them out. And so you would get like a roll of fifty, or because back then you had the penny candy. You know, you were getting like. Yeah. A bag of Swedish fish when it cost like a dollar or something. So you get a couple of those, you were good to go. But it was just kind of. We had a neighbor when I was a kid. They'd hand out big K colas from Kroger, can of cola every to every kid. And every parent would love that when the kids would come. Really big K cola. Yeah. So he he would have he'd sit outside on his porch and he'd have cases upon cases of just colas (laughs) sitting on his porch. And he'd have like a line down the driveway waiting to get a big cake cola. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think back to when we were kids, I don't know if we would have drank and we probably would have stuck them up and started shooting them at each other back then. So <laughs> but um yeah, I think, think about like, that. That's, that's that was a pretty good idea though, because you get like a case for what, like two dollars or four dollars or something like that? Yeah. I was never I was never a big candy corn person. So I didn't like the candy nah. corn. And I didn't like the fake when I would call them I, as a kid. I would call it the fake sweet tarts. It was the uh, the other flat circle candy. Um, like I was like Norelco or somebody. It was like Norco or it was like wafers or whatever. Like it was like the fake sweet tarts to me. I didn't like those at all as a kid. So what what about the peanut butter chews that were just in either the orange wrapper or the black wrapper? See, I like peanut butter, so I was happy with those. I can do those. I wasn't a big fan of Tootsie Rolls either. I hate it when I got Tootsie Rolls. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan either. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. See, I, I mean, I like those peanut butter chews now, but I remember as a kid, I was like, ah, really? Now well, go back a, to that house. Was it, were you more happier on getting candy on Halloween? Would you look more forward to that or would you look forward to the trading day the next day at school? Because you would come in and trade <laughs> all the candy. <laughs> and that's really when you started creating your negotiator skills, right? That's you were right. Yeah. If you didn't want there. And you bring them to school when you'd be like, well, I got these Tootsie Rolls I don't really like, but... Yeah, I get, I'll give you two of these like, for one of those. Yeah, like, can you get that back <laughs> now later? I'll give you three Tootsie Rolls for... You know, you were kind of... You learn how to negotiate at that age, so... Um, but, you know, as you're picking up candy, as we're a few weeks away from Halloween, you know, think about the kids, you know, think about what you didn't like. And then, you know, get some kids some of the stuff you did like, so... Which I didn't like Milky Way as a kid growing up, but I do enjoy Milky Ways now. Um, yeah, how many times did you go fill your bag and then go home, empty it out, and then start back over again? A couple times. Well, we had different rules back then, right? So nowadays they tell you you go between like seven and nine or six and eight or whatever it is. Back then we kept going until someone didn't answer the door. So we'd be yeah. like <laughs> 11 still right. trick or treating the people, which is always great because when you got to the 10 o'clock hour, people are just tired of kids coming around. So they have to. Hey. Nice bowls out. <laughs> out. Just take a handful or whatever. You like you get your hands ready because you were like, no, you're gonna get a good handful of the stuff out. So that's when you started really making the extra candy at that point. So Yeah. Yeah. But uh it was a good time. It was a good time trick or treating back then. The good old days. The good old days. <laughs> of course back then we had to dodge we did dodge the bigger kids because they were too big to trick or treat, but they would do the bag snatching. So yeah. you also had <laughs> right. that answer. So you also learned how to work on your uh, defense your, uh, mechanisms, defense skills, and you know <laughs> subterfuge and all that kind of stuff. Because you had to navigate back home and away from where the other kids are that would try to snatch your candy. So you had all kinds of stuff going on. I mean, you really had a lot of planning happening. So you could have almost yeah. had a, you almost could have had a Boy Scout badge for all the stuff you had to do on Halloween night. A lot of learning going on. You just didn't realize it. Yeah. <laughs> a trick-or-treat badge from the boys. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Let me see here. I was on comments. Um, Arabian, I know you said Arabana. Um, oh, yeah. So James said, give me a Diablo sandwich and a Dr. Pepper. Now, I don't know what a Diablo sandwich is. I don't know if that's a Chicago thing. So let me know, James, what the Diablo sandwich is. And Drunken One brought up a good point. The school would provide the gear years ago, which is true. The schools did provide the gear. 
somehow a lot of schools got left behind and now parents are absorbing more of those costs. In terms of how money, talk about the money, we're talking about him making money. Um, Eric Gilbert said he went a high 100 kilometer to low 200 kilometer in the BMW. So I don't know how fast that would be. Let's see, 100 to 200 kilometer. Translate. It's probably like 180 or something. 160, 180, right around there. Convert kilometers per hour to miles per hour. Well, 200 kilometers is 124 miles per hour. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's going between 62 to that to 124. That's pretty, still pretty quick. Like I said, I took the Cutlass up and it was up to 110 at the time. The, the Charger was at 105 when I took that one out. So, you got a Mustang, right, Ryan? Yeah, which I got to actually take to the shop because I need some work done on it now. But yeah. How fast have you had that? I never really took that one out because she used to drive that one when I drove the Charger. So, I never really ran it. Um, once I get this all tuned up and stuff, I might take it out and see how much I can kind of push it to. So, yeah, I was going to drop, drive home with the top down today. And then, of course, right when I was trying to get off work, it started raining. So I couldn't put the top down, which sucked. <laughs> um, James says, I love all candy and now I have no teeth to show for it. <laughs> 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 yeah, Eric's at, around, Eric's at around 160. So, yeah. Um, and then let's see here. Eric says, You know, you're going fast. When a driver tells you to keep your head in the seat and don't fight the G-force in the turns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you would definitely hold you back and everything. And then James said, Diablo Sandwich is a smoky and a bandit reference. Oh, okay. Hilarious scene with Jackie Gleason. That's when they went into the restaurant, and that's when uh, I think Jackie Gleason had the toilet paper on him. I was thinking it was actual sense, but it was from the movie there. Tim said 140. And he says with no chip. So, so I'm still working on the Natty Rush Long Island. If you guys have had this before out there, let me know what you thought of it. For me, it was a simple one out of five. I'm not going to do a review on it or anything like that, but come on, right? Do it, do it proper. I wouldn't hunt it down, but <clears throat> if I had enough to drink and I was at a party and someone said, here's another drink, I'd probably drink it still. <laughs> I went search for it, but if it ended up in my hand, I'd be like, ah, what are you going to do? It's right here. It's in my hand. Um, you should give it a proper right now, live. <laughs> Natty Rush. Don't rush out. <laughs> I'd be amazed to see. I'm going to check to see if there's anybody that's done a chug of Natty Rush. That would be, that would be something to see. If somebody actually chugged this out there, which they probably have, but. There you go, Eric. Monday night malt liquor no. chug. Monday malt liquor chug. <laughs> nope. Eric, Eric's the malt liquor king on this panel. <laughs> for sure. You need, to, you need to get malt Mustang on this one for the malt liquor king. Yeah, get malt Mustang on. Get him to do a little chug here. That'd be something. Oh, yeah, so I think I've I actually did a video on the uh Jameson Castmate Stout Edition, so I'll probably upload that here at some point too. I'm trying to get through all my backlog. I have like I think I'm down to twenty two videos backlogged right now. So Wow, twenty two videos backlogged? I can't get I, yeah, I was ahead, but I couldn't get them all out and stuff, so which isn't bad to have a backlog because I mean you always have stuff you can upload and everything, but the problem is you miss some of the time period. Like the one I just uploaded, I forgot which one it was, it was like done in July, right? So we're like in September, so it's kind of like a little bit mm -hmm. behind there, but you never know when people are going to watch your videos anyway, I, I thought. So it doesn't matter when you upload it, they may watch something like six months from now anyway. Right. So, yeah, so it might not be as bad. Eric, when are you going to do your other uh, two videos for Pumpkin, Warlock, whatever? Well, the Warlock came out today. 
and the uh, the blend comes out tomorrow. And then I'm going to start okay. my well, I can't start my Oktoberfest series until the week after this day, or until the week after maybe next week or something like that, because I got to go to Aurora, uh, and um, I'm the western su suburbs of Chicago. So I got. Are you going to go into, go into Chicago at all? Yeah, I got to go to Chicago for well, the western suburbs of Chicago because I got to go to work over there. Right. I mean, are you going to get to go downtown and do anything or? Nah, probably not. Okay. Yeah, I got to go there in about a month. Well, now, after that, I got to go to Toronto. Oh, oh you catch up with some people in Toronto, some of the Canadian beer drinkers. Yeah. Because I think in Toronto, um, actually Eric Gilbert, I think is near Toronto. Uh, is he really? I think he's in the Toronto area. And then um, one of the other beer tubers is up there. Um, Joe would know because Joe's Joe could actually probably meet up with you. He's like right there in Buffalo. He's like 15, 20 miles outside Toronto, I think. Okay. Yeah. I would definitely reach out to those guys. I think um, Greg might be Toronto as well. And then after, and then the week after that, I go to Kentucky. Where are you going to, where are you going to Kentucky? Uh, right around uh, south of, um, where is that, south of um, Bowling Green. Oh, you're going down. To, oh, yeah, you're going down south of Kentucky. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me know when you're down there, though. All right. I mean, it's like. Like Southwest for me, but I don't know. We'll see. Because she was talking about maybe trying to do like a getaway type thing or something. Okay. okay. How far Eric, is that for you, Eric, Ron? Eric said, Eric said he's out east from Toronto. I think from there it's like three hours or something. I don't think it's that yeah. far. To Bowling Green? Yeah, three to four hours maybe. Like because it's yeah. like that's from Baduca, I believe. It's probably about yeah. two and a half for me. Yeah. Well, it, it, Eric says out east from Toronto. Yeah, I'm over by the like the Campbellford area. That's where our kind of a our little plan is. That's where I'm gonna be at. Yeah. Eric Gilbert gets you drunk in Toronto. <laughs> well, I'm I'm pretty shit faced right now. Gets you drunk and crunk. Which you went <laughs> you went you went on a trip to was it Atlanta and you were going yes. out partying and karaoke. So what happened there? You were talking about you were like out like. These guys went to party or whatever. Well, I, I, I went to this little – we were at the Drury Inn right next to the airport. Oh, I see Atlanta. Drury Inn. Okay. And right next to it, there was this little little bar and grill place. I'm like, well, you know what? I'm going to go over there. I'm going to have a couple of drinks and come back. Well, I came, I came over there, and I was like – and I talked to some people. One, from a, one person from Nova Scotia, and the other person was from um, – where was she from? Um, oh, Puerto Rico. Okay. She worked from FEMA and she's like, you know how them, how fucking Trump is always like <laughs> trying to do shit from FEMA and all that. I'm like, look, lady, I, I, I don't want anything to do with that, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, no, speak of, no speak of English. I don't know. For the alcohol, not for the politics. I'm here for the alcohol right now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? But then you end up partying with them for a little bit too, right? Like, well, I, 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 I want them till about eleven thirty. I'm looking at the phone. I'm like, fuck, dude, I gotta get up for a plane in the morning. I better go. I'm like, no, no, stay, stay. I'm like, no, I gotta, I gotta get in for a plane in the morning. <laughs> I really want, I really want to close the bar down, but I really gotta get a plane in the morning. <laughs> I gotta fly tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, you can sleep on the plane. Come on, Eric. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <Thanks. laughs> There's snakes on a plane. You can sleep on a plane. Apparently, drunken was eating tuna from the can right now. Wow. What? Yeah. Gotta go that healthy route. <laughs> I was going to make a joke there, but I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> exactly. Leave that one alone. Leave it alone. All kinds of people end up in lawsuits nowadays. <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> Hey, drunken one, drunken one, bear chicken bear here. <laughs> but Eric Gilbert said a Campbell's Ford is a one hour and a half for me. My older brother uh, lives down the river from Campbell's Ford, so he's like an hour and a half away. Well, Eric, I'm going to hit you up to try to find some breweries over there. So let me know. And then Obi Wan, welcome Obi Wan. Thanks for chiming in, and uh, 
Nice uh, finding your video earlier. I was watching Obi Wan. You could check out his Obi Wan reviews. Um, surprise, George Lucas hasn't tried to sue him yet, but um, he actually had a beer he did that was a Belgian beer um, that was like five years old. It was actually still pretty good. I mean, the, the monks know how to make good beer and stuff. He had a beer. I think it was from. A, I think you said it was from your your one of your father had there. So I'm glad you enjoyed it and everything, but. Beer done properly, depending on what kind it is, can last for a while. Elbow, what's up going on? What's happening down there in Florida, my friend? He says, all right, all right, all right. Came with the Matthew McGahey opening. <laughs> Said, cheers, folks. <laughs> you know, that is a movie I have not watched before. Dazed and Confused. Really? Why I have not watched it, I cannot tell you, but I have not watched that movie. And I've got it on DVD. I never, I never sat down and watched it. As Joe would say, that's on you. <laughs> I always hear about how good it is, though. Dude, but I got so many things I can't watch now. I've got Luke Cage I haven't watched yet. I haven't watched uh, 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 Iron Fist. Daredevil's back in a couple weeks with their new season. Yeah, I'm, well, I don't, I don't care much for the Iron Fist. I'm still catching up on Snowfall. I heard the Iron Fist second season was better than the first, though. Okay. Uh, I mean, if you get through that one, I guess. Yeah. And How far behind are you on Snowfall? I think I'm at episode... I think the last one I watched was episode five or six. So I've got uh, okay. the yard. I want to finish them out. Is the season over now? Yeah. Okay, so I'm trying to still finish those out. Yeah, it, it was good. Yeah. And then, uh, so, uh, so what's no. happened? So, where, where are you at right now? Where what's happened? So, I don't want to say too much and give anything away. Uh, the, the last episode I watched is with his buddy, was hanging out with the uh, the Mexican girls trying to find out information. He walked in on his other buddy, or no, his uncle, no, no, the other guy that's the bodyguard walked in on his the boy having sex with the girl. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you got a little bit to go then. No, you, you need to you need to watch it. Teddy took him to meet uh I forgot the other main guy's name to let him know that he didn't set him up and stuff. So Ari or whatever. Yeah. So Yeah. Yeah, I got a, I got a few that still catch up there. Oh, hello. Yeah. Hello, Ruan. Thanks for chiming in. Ruan is actually in Brazil. Thanks for coming by and catching nice. up on the channel. Yes, cheers, buddy. Cheers. Cheers. We are trying to grow worldwide, like prestige worldwide. That's what we're trying to do. Worldwide! <laughs> Boats and hoes. <laughs> yeah, still tasted beautiful, talking about the beer he had. It was, a, it was Abby something. I can't remember the full name of it, but I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, Dave Think of Fuse was my high school experience in the movie, says James. <laughs> and they're sitting down there. Actually, I know parts of the movie, and I actually got to meet with James when I went to Chicago. We had some beers. And the reason I was asking if you're going downtown is there's a great place called Miller's Pub in Chicago where you can get some good craft beer and also some great food. And uh, he said Daisy Confused was his high school experience. I can see him enjoying high school that way. Um, Eric Gilbert says Church Key Brewing in Campbellsport. So there you go. There's one There's one name for when you're up there. I'm going to check that out, Eric. Thank you. And then Tim said cheers again. And then, and then Eric, the Lions fan, said Eric to Eric, I think. Because it just says Eric. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if you were saying that's your name or you were saying something to the other Eric, but. I was know. saying it to that guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> the, two that the two Eric's are having a bonding moment right now, people. It's a bromance. And this is, this is going to be a while before you ever see me drink another Natty Rest. I'll give you that. But I'm still drinking it, you know, because. We need to see you do an actual review on that, Rod. I'd have to buy what? another one, which is not probably not going to happen. Well, you can, said, you, you can drain for it. Tonight. You can ah. drain for it. Yeah, I mean, it, I already gave it like a one, so I, I don't see why I would want to review because I wouldn't finish the whole thing anyway. I mean, well, I ain't going to finish this whole one, but eh, I don't know. Have you yeah, done a review? What, you done what a could you really say about it? Yeah, right. <laughs> have you done a review where you can actually drain poured it, though, afterwards? Or do you finish all your beers? I don't. No, I don't. Yeah, I usually finish all mine when I actually do it. There's like some, one, there's, uh, what, goodness, what one was it that I didn't do? I had a drain pour. Oh, the Oracle. 
You didn't like the Oracle? No, I didn't. I it was too chalky for me. That chalky undertone to me. I had, really? I, had, I hadn't had. It. I just heard it was like a good beer, so I don't. I don't know for sure how it actually tastes. I I liked it. I liked the Oracle. I mean, it wasn't bad. Don't get me wrong; it wasn't bad. I just I I, I had enough of it, and I just drain poured it. Yeah. Did you buy a six pack or just or a four pack or a single? Just a single. I think the single cost like a. A dollar ninety nine, I think, is what it was. Well, that's not too bad. No, not for not for that high ABV beer. No. <laughs> well, you guys continue for a second. I'm gonna run to the restroom here. So right. restroom. We're in the bathroom. It's my house. A goddamn bathroom. Ain't no restroom. Where did Todd go? There's. I'm here. I don't know what. I don't know what Todd, happened. You know, I said I'm gonna disappear for a second. He's like, oh, yeah, I'll be the. <laughs> <laughs> it said you joined the video call, Todd. What He's the like, hell? Like, Leave well, your- maybe it, it said my app stopped, so I had to reboot. I'll be right back. Talk amongst yourselves. That's it. Michael uh, Myers would say, give you a topic. I'm a little bit clapped right now, so I'll be right back. <laughs> All right. Eric Gilbert says, the Celtic Brewing and there's more breweries are in Trenton and Prince Edward County. Well, I've never been to actually to Campbellford before, so if you can, you know, put like on my Twitter account, I'm at at Eric Alliance fan on on my Twitter account, just let me know kind of where the breweries are at and whatnot, and I'll sh- and I should probably be able to bring them over to, um, to like Google Maps to let me know kind of where these guy where these guys are at. So, um, you know, kind of tweet me and whatnot. And well, we should be able to go from there. Todd, you got anything? When you when are you going to Atlanta? Or are you going to Atlanta? No, Toronto. Toronto. And uh, let's see, today's 10 4, so it'll be two weeks. And then to Bowling Green or South Oak? Yeah, I got to go to Campbellford, Toronto. Well, I got to go to Toronto and then go to Campbellford, which will probably be a plane. I, I, I really could drive, but I don't really want to drive because it's the, the bullshit you got to deal with with customs and all that. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't blame you there. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I've done it before because I had to go to England and come back, and it was that that was that 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 trip to me was a really good trip. It was just long because it was two weeks and I wasn't back home, and I'm like, man, that's you know, it was six hours there and it was nine hours back, but it was it, it was all right. But anyway, I got to go to Camelford and then I had to come back, and then the next week I got to go to uh, Kentucky, which is down by. Oh goodness, where's that? Um, Horse Cave, Kentucky, which is oh yeah, yeah. Well, you said near Bowling Green, right? Yeah, which is I th- I think it's south of Bowling Green. Yeah, so you're kind of southwest. Yeah, southwest part of Kentucky. Yeah, I mean from from Utah, I'm about two and a half yeah. hours, probably. I, I'd probably say closer to four. Uh, well, unless you're quite a bit ways from Bowling. I think Bowling Green's about two, two and a half hours for me. Well, for me, for me to you has got it. Are you at the southern end of uh, Indiana, aren't you? Yeah, I'm just like a couple miles across the river from Louisville. Yeah, for me, it's uh, since I'm up, up by Lansing, I'm about three and a half, four hours from you. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Did you get all? Did you get all the comments already? No, we haven't even mentioned the comments yet. Oh, okay. I saw a thing from Mitch. He asked if we were since I'm actually in the Cincy area. Eric's actually in Michigan, and Todd's in Indiana. But are you in Cincy as well, Mitch? And let me go back up here. First key, blah, 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 blah. You, you only need one. Tim said. You did a Celtic brew, and I already heard that. Tim said IPA. He tries and pours my Tim's not a big IPA fan, so I, I am going to try to go the Celtic brewing. I'm going to go to the other one, Eric. It's oh, funny to get out church key. dude. You should go and shoot some video if you go, if you can. I'm, go- I'm going to. I'm going to bring my little tripod that I've got on my. What's it? My Logitech. I'm gonna just spin it off and just yeah. bring it with me. 
it takes it takes a while to get used to it. Like when you set out, like I tell you that, like I don't know how many times you've done it in the brewery or whatever. Like yeah. the first time it's kind of weird, everybody kind of looking at you and stuff. But now it's just like you set it up, you start talking and stuff. But kind of get some a little bit of interest. So you'll probably get some looks like, "What's he doing over there?" Type thing stuff too. But it's a great. Tell him like, "Come on over, man! Come on over." <laughs> Let's see. Uh, and then Mitch said, "Yeah, from Cincy, just watched a review of your Franz Ryan guys. I want to try it soon. Yeah, definitely do it before it's actually going because it is their October best offering. Good beer. And Mitch, if you haven't tried, if you like uh, fruity type beer, you should try their Wowie. It's actually a really good beer that they actually came out with recently too. I think that one might be getting ready to go away as well. But Ryan guys does some uh, good stuff here. Of course, Mad Tree, which I'm supposed to go to Mad Tree. I think Tuesday now." to uh, talk with them. So that might be an upcoming video on the channel as well. They actually, um, and Mitch, you probably had this before. It's their Happy Amber. I think, Todd, you've had it as well, probably. Yeah. Um, they, they got a gold medal at Great American Beer to come out and talk with them on some stuff. So I might go out there Tuesday and shoot some video and share some of that stuff, too, from their award-winning brew. So, oh, I didn't tell you guys about the beer idea I had earlier. So it was funny because I was, like, getting ready for work early. I was in the shower and I was thinking... Just pop your head like things just pop in your head sometimes when you're not even thinking about it, right? Like people say, Oh, I'll sleep on it because you get ideas at that point. But all the like the sour breweries that are out there, and I thought about them using bread and the and I thought about the whole Brett Kavanaugh type situation taking place with the whole judge type thing. And I'd be like, Yeah, you should have a beer saying, I like beer, I like, I like beer by bread or something, right? Because it has bread and the in it, so you can easily make a play of it. And then you could have on it the label, like a gavel with the hammer, and you could put like judge. Someone's approved. already brewing it, Rob. Somebody's <laughs> already brewing it. You could put judge approved on the label. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be, be a crazy great beer to come out with for one of these sour breweries because they use Brett and the Mices. I'm like, I like beer by Brett, or I like, or, you know, I'm, or something like Brett. I like beer. You know, you can have so much fun with the type thing, and then, you know. I just I thought about that this morning. Like it should be a sour beer coming out with that title. That would be a seller. Whether you like yeah, just Brett, give it a couple don't. weeks. Yeah, like <laughs> the people that don't like Brett would think it'd be hilarious and they'll buy it. And the ones that do support Brett will buy it because they're supporting Brett, right? So I think it'd be a funny beer myself. <laughs> Someone's already <laughs> brewing it. Yeah. <laughs> so if anybody's not watching that's a brewer, it's a good idea for you, you know. I like beer. Brett by Brett, or I like Brett. I like, like beer. However you want to play it, it's up to you. Good brewery, but um, outside of that, we've been going for a little bit tonight. But everybody seems to be enjoying themselves, and I don't know what your guys. You guys are still good, or yeah, yeah. yeah All right, man, I'm we'll good. Keep, I'm good. We'll keep rolling. We'll keep the party going. But I'm still finishing <laughs> the <bad> rush. <laughs> I, I've never it down. so long before in my life, right? Like this thing, I am really working on it. So to part party in a can. I'm trying to what? get through this last Bud Light Platinum. I yeah, we're all struggling to get through. Yeah. <laughs> that craft beer is going to taste so good tomorrow. Um, <laughs> you guys are selling the shit out of that. Let me tell you. Yeah. Well, uh, guys, they, for me, for me, tomorrow is going to be the Dragon Smelt. Ooh. Oh, you uploading it? Are you drinking that, or are you just uploading the video tomorrow? I'm gonna upload the video tomorrow. Okay. Just a regular. Well, it's the their their latest dragon milk dragon's milk reserve. Excuse me. Nice. The, the caramel salted caramel. It's what what one is it? It's the um. I I I I would have to look, Todd. I would have to look. Yeah. One Come thing on, Eric is trying to give you a promo there, and you can't even remember the damn beer. Well, I can go. The fridge is only about <laughs> ten feet away. I can grab it and bring it back. <laughs> no, I'm just giving it our time. <laughs> well, thanks, Obi. Appreciate it. Obi says he's enjoying the chat, just working with, it so he won't converse. So he's listening. So that's good because I kind of wanted to come across, kind of in the video. If you're watching it, but if you're not watching, kind of like a podcast type feel, right? You could do some other stuff while you're sitting there and just have it playing in the background. So. Definitely appreciate that. One thing I was going to ask, um, and I told you too, like we were like messaging and stuff, but I uploaded a new thing that I'm thinking about doing on the channel and kind of interested to see what anybody watching may think of as well. But I did a video called Brew Talk the other night, and it talked about like what 
does attenu attenuation really mean? But I want to get more stuff out there that might be like kind of a brewer's type thing or a kind of feel or terms you hear around a brewery. You know, what is it really like IBU or SRM and all that kind of stuff? Now, I'm just curious if any of you guys have watched that video, what did you think? Did you like that? Would you want to see more stuff like that? Is that stuff kind of kind of cool to take a look at to kind of give like a little bit of a basis behind it if you're not as familiar with brewing? Just let me know. And I think I'm going to try to get some more PowerPoint videos out there like that as well, just to make it a little bit different because – one thing I noticed, there's a lot of beer reviews out there, but there's other stuff to kind of cover other areas like beer knowledge. And, you know, outside of Ryan and beer by the numbers, not many people are doing things along those lines. So just want to see what your guys' feedback was on that as well. Hey, Rod, uh, are you going to do any more of the hop, uh, the hop series? Where you I, like... I going to do more of the hop series, like the, uh, the little minute beer buzz type thing. I did like yeah. A minute. yeah, I want to do more of those as well. And kind of just kind of position some other stuff out there. I know some of the guys that watch that are home brewers like some of that stuff too. They told me so. I like to get some more of that. I feel like the beer review stuff. I like doing it and it's fun. And we have a lot of good people doing beer review, but it's almost like everybody does beer review for the most part. So I'm trying to look at other things that might be other areas that might be of interest. Um, and it really like Shannon brought up a point when we had her last week. She and I wouldn't do it that way unless she was on the show with me because she was like position stuff for women or whatever. Because I think you want to have a woman as being a part of it. Like you're not coming up kind of preaching to women. Um, but putting stuff out there about what different things meet in brewing, different things on how they would actually work and stuff like that would be kind of a cool thing. So I want to get more of those kind of things out there. And I thought like starting off like that brew talk might be a good way to do something along those lines. So Just be careful what you ask for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She would, she would probably totally do it, though. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I would like to have more women involved on the channel. I think a lot of women do get in the room, but a lot of times they get overshadowed or not really looked at as much or asked for things. And even some of the women that I know that work in brewing, like they'll give it a, uh, they'll give somebody an answer, like some of these breweries, and the guys will go look for another guy to like get the answer from. So I would love yeah. to have more women involved and stuff too, which is. Just, you know, stupid. And it's like, I see, like, they tell me that. I'm like, well, you know more than probably so-and-so does. And it's like, you know, this whole different thing along those lines. We're not going to that road. But anyway, anything that I'm trying to do different things to keep the channel a little more fresh and everything, you know. Yeah, like some, people like, some people like the musical backgrounds and the videos now and stuff like that, too. And so I try to get some of the older nostalgia type stuff. And, you know, just always try to keep it fresh and keep people involved and see what people like and Make sure, you know, you're getting the product you want to watch if you're going to spend time watching it because time is present. Like I said, I can't keep up on all the shows. I tell Eric, like, I'm trying to catch up on his videos. I'm trying to catch up on Joe's videos and Craig and all these different guys that are doing videos. It's tough. So if you are here, I do appreciate it. I want to keep you entertained. And the other thing, like I did the uh, – last week I did the uh, kind of the spotlight on other channels, and it seemed like a lot of people liked it. So if that's something that's kind of cool and you want to take part in that, let me know. And We'll highlight that and maybe do that again and highlight some of the channels and stuff too. So just trying to do some different things and keep it uh, fun for everybody. I know what I've been doing lately is uh, I'll uh, link my phone through uh, Bluetooth on my car mm -hmm. and then drive on my drive home is only like 10 or 12 minutes. You know, I'll do a video or, video or so, just listen to it on my home. Yeah, and I've done that with our like our Jeep. We have the Bluetooth in it as well. So sometimes I'll pair it in there when I'm going places. It's just like a podcast coming through, right? So you can listen to it. And that's why I tell people like sometimes like if I don't if you don't see me comment or like your video, I'm trying to still watch a lot of them. But sometimes I'm like cooking dinner or something like that. And I'll be listening to the video, but I might not get back before it switches over. So you might not see a like or a comment, but I'm definitely paying attention to everybody out there. And try to get as much exposure as possible. And welcome, Chris. On the tenth, it's in the house. It's been a while, my friend. So, welcome, Cheers, welcome, welcome. Cheers. Cheers. What's up? And Chris is up in Canada. Chris, what part of Canada are you in, as well? By the way, because I can't remember if you might be near Toronto too. I can't remember offhand. I know I'm going to be up by Toronto in about two weeks. Yeah, I know who's not near Toronto is Redbeard. So you don't have to worry about seeing Red. No, <laughs> <laughs> so Rhino is he coming? So now, yeah. Lionel, Rhino, if you come by this video, I'm going to be in Toronto in two weeks, buddy. Yeah, I think Chad is Toronto as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's funny. Like, Red, it's like Red Beer is like on an island, like a part of Canada or something. Like he's like so far up or whatever. It's like he's away from everybody else. Um, yeah, so so here's the thing. Like Chris is near Niagara Falls, so he's going to be kind of close to you. 
between Toronto and Buffalo. Hey, Buffalo in. area, Toronto area, come on, come on up by me. I'm, I, I will tweet you guys where I'm at, and we can all get together and kind of maybe do a, maybe a little bit of a beer share, or maybe go to a brewery or whatnot, and we'll we'll do a video. Okay. He said he's 30 minutes from Joe, so Joe's right there off the border. Um, and then Jason Ford, he says, "All I know, most Canadians on the east." So, um, Jason Voorhees, of course, being from California, every one of you is back east. Oh. <laughs> wow. Touché. And, then, and then Chris said, "When are you going to be up there?" So I don't know if he caught when you told him just a second ago. So if you want to say it again to him, let him know where you'll be up that way. And then Drunken One says, the party is on now. <laughs> <laughs> that was a party of Drunken One's involved. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that'd be kind of cool if you got together with them. You could have a little fun time and shoot a little video with you guys. I know when they get together, like Joe and Chris and that, actually Nick, Maxwell Star, he's in that area too. Um, they do some videos and stuff, and they know some of the good little local spots to hit as well. So that'd be kind of cool. I tell you, it's kind of fun getting out and, you know, seeing people. You know, Todd was able to come up here. I was able to go to Chicago, and I met James out there. And, you know, hanging out with some of the guys that you're experiencing some of the beer stuff. It's fun when you get to meet for the first time, but it's kind of weird, too, because I feel like you've known the person for so long already. Cause <laughs> yeah, exactly. Stuff, you know? Exactly. But, Yeah. And sooner or later, I'll let Todd beat me in Madden at some point. Just not ready, <laughs> not, ready, not ready for that yet. <laughs> Have you even played it yet, Rod? I've tried, and the computer's whipping my ass right now. I'm like, I need to get my Madden skills back up. So <laughs> I used to be great at Madden, and I don't know. I just had to play for a few years, and they changed some of the routines. And yeah, it's definitely a lot different. Yeah, so it's a little bit different. I can still do hockey. I can still do basketball. You still do like I don't. I don't play the baseball games as much, but at Madden, tricky. It's tricky. Rock a run, a rock a run. I find out how trick it. So, have you had the Natty Rush, Long Island Lightning? If so, let me know what you thought about it. I doubt anybody's actually had this though, because like I said, Untapped only have five ratings, including mine. So it must be new. I've not seen it. Yeah, it's a limited market. It's a Rod J special. Yeah. <laughs> so my beer seller is now down to 138. So oh, bear go stock, bear go stock up. Yeah, I'm trying to work that number down. <laughs> I got what did you pay for that Natty Rush? Uh, this was like a dollar. I don't think dollar twenty nine or something, dollar forty nine or something. Not expensive, and it shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might be pushing the edge right there. Chris said that looks interesting. Rod, no, Chris, it's not. It's not interesting. Don't <laughs> let the don't let the don't let the can fool you. You know, I know it's kind of got a look on it. Like if I was at a hockey game, I could see drinking. So it's kind of got a nice little logo look to it. So, so Rod, have you checked all your uh, have you checked all your cellar beers in on your cellar list on Untapped? Yeah, yeah, so I got 130. Oh, so. Uh-oh. Turn that way. So, I haven't opened it yet, but I'll do a beer unboxing tomorrow. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Rare, rare beer club in the hizzle. How many more of those you got left? This is like my last one, I think, for September, unless they renew them and get me more. But yeah. two more. Beers to explore in here. So I'll be back to 140 in the cellar by tomorrow. Have you drank all those? Have you drank them all that they've no, seen? No, I haven't, I haven't yet. So the one I uploaded, the American Solera, that was one of them. That was really good. So I'm going to go ahead and open this. This actually was my buddy's house. And he said his kid almost started to open it and everything. That so he was like the package for them or whatever. And so he stopped because he knew I had to do unboxings with them. But, uh, That'll be something upcoming as well. Kind of interested to see what's in there, but I'm going to wait. I'm going to hold my delight like it's, you know, Christmas or whatever. And then I'll probably do the unboxing tomorrow video and upload that as well. 
Um, Jason Voorhees, is that an energy drink? No, this is the uh, well, I don't know <laughs> if alcohol fuels you. Be, it, it could be. be, it is the Natty Rush, it is eight percent ABV, it is the Long Island Lightning. Check it out, Long Island Lightning. And it does look like an energy drink. You know what? I just realized too, huh? I always forget to do that. My uh, my background is backwards. Does it look backwards to you guys? No. What about now? No, it wasn't backwards before. Oh, well, my screen looked backwards before. Okay, all right. I just flipped it, so I thought I had it turned the wrong way. So, you guys see the? I got the Black Panther poster now with the Ghost Rider with the Green Lantern. So. I don't see the Black Panther one. I think it's blocked by the camera scene here. Let me see. Oh, okay. Let me see if I can pick it up that way. See, there's Black Panther. Wow. That was like from the movie thing. I, we ordered our tickets through Fandango, and they're like, hey, you're eligible for a free poster. So, uh, sure. I didn't, I didn't frame it, but, you know, it's a nice little poster. And people were freaking out in the Avengers. It's like, ah. I tell you, but I can't tell you because it'll be spoiled for you for later on. <laughs> but I'm like, it'll be okay. <laughs> it'll be okay. Um, Chris says, well, you can't stick around. I get up for bed in the morning. Just stop by to say hi. Talk to you guys soon. Yeah, definitely, Chris. Thanks for swinging in. Hey, Chris. All right, brother. Cheers, buddy. Hopefully Cheers. catch up soon. Maybe do a hangout or something this weekend or something along those lines. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're going to hit a brewery, too, and uh, maybe a tap house on Saturday, I think. Over in Louisville? No, nah, we're just going to stay in Indiana. Where are you going? What city are you going to? Is uh, it Jeffersonville. Okay. So they got a Flight 12. Uh, then we have a, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a really good tap house called Pearl Street. Oh, nice. Uh, tap house, yeah, it's really nice. They got about, I don't know, 25, 30 different uh, – Brews on tap. It's a pretty good place. Usually, I know they got some pretty good. They usually have some pretty good stuff on tap. And then there's another uh, brewery downtown there. It's called uh, used to be called Red Yeti, but then they got in a little uh, uh, pissing match, I guess, from the uh, Yeti beers from Great Divide. Uh, yeah. So now they now their now the restaurant's still called Red Yeti, but the brewing the brewery sector is called Red Foot. Now they had to change their name. Yeah. So we might hit that up. And uh, there's a little pizza place downtown. It's got a nice little uh, outside garage type bar. And they have they have pretty good uh, draft list as well. It's, it's some pretty good places down there. All within, uh, you know, a couple, two or three blocks. It's a nice little, uh, it's a nice night, good little walking, you know, kind of brewery, tap house type hop thing or whatever. Yeah. So we might do that Saturday. Yeah, I forgot. I've got a I've got a Yeti stout in the freezer as well, or the fridge. I need to drink too. Got way too many freaking beers. <laughs> Drunken one, are you ready to move in? Yeah, Drunken one wanted to move into my basement. So you can <laughs> he was going to work security, you know. Just got bring next? some. Just got bring some beef jerky. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> well, next time I go ahead, I'll get some mail out to you guys. I'm going to send some to Drunken one too. So. I was gonna get out there and get some I more. Think, I think it's about time we all do another beer mail package. Yeah, because I need more beer. My, I just told you. How <laughs> <laughs> well, to Todd and to Joe, maybe not to you, but to Todd and to Joe. <laughs> hey, I always take beer. I'd actually prefer in January because I'm trying to work through what I have now. So it is getting stout season. So I, I'll, I'll get you guys from some some of the stuff from Ellison, which is a. Uh, a, lo a local brewery right here in East Lansing, which is, I, I, I think it's a really good brewery, but I want to, I want your guys' opinion on it. I've seen more things pop up with Ellison, like online on some of the uh, videos. I'm trying to think in Michigan, I believe Brad Allison might be in Michigan as well. Yeah, Brad Allison, he's over by Kalamazoo. Yeah, he's done some of the Ellison beers. Isn't uh, Oddside up there also? Yes. Yeah, I've seen Oddside Ales too, yeah. It's yep. supposed to be really good. Do you get those, Eric, or do you have to go to the brewery? No, I, 
Well, I can go to the brewery or I can go to right. Goodness, right, right in Lansing and get you guys some if you want some. Oh, okay. Yeah, beers up. Beers always good. Uh, Todd, do you have what Slurpee beers for four fifty? Right. Say it again, Roger. Kind of cut out there for a minute. Sorry. You got the Slurpee beers for four fifty, didn't you? Yeah, I still got a couple of them. Yeah, they're good. They're really good. I actually got a couple uh, from uh, Listerman. My brother brought me a week ago. Yeah, some of I their uh, get some more Listerman beers. Yeah, I mean, he brought me uh, like four different ones, and every one of them so far has been good. I haven't tried one of their Ber- Berliner Weissen yet, so I'm trying to try. Uh, curious to see. I probably have one of those this weekend. See how those are compared yeah. to like a 450. Yeah, I'll have to get some of those out to you guys next yeah, time I can get my hands on some. We've got a beer festival in Kentucky this weekend. I'm not going to go down. They sent me a thing they, to let me know about it. Um, down in Pikeville, Kentucky, which is east of Lexington, like eastern Kentucky. Yeah, and that's, it in, that's in the mountain area there, Pikeville. Yeah, yeah, Pikeville. It's Hoptoberfest. So you got that Saturday. And I actually thought about it for a second about going down because she was talking about trying to get away this weekend or something. And I'm like, yeah, let's get away to Pike. She's like, not till you can go to a beer fest. So I didn't bring it up because come to Louis- come to Louisville, Rod. Just come right. to Louisville. <laughs> 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 we talk about going to like Gatlinburg or something like that and everything too, which I wouldn't mind going down to a cabin. But you go to Gatlinburg, you want to go for like a few days or so, not just a day or two down there and come back because of the drive sure. and dealing with traffic and all that stuff. So there you go, there you iron go. hat. You come stay, hit some breweries. Yeah. Go some wineries. Your your wife likes wine, though, right? Yeah, yeah. And actually, we we'll, may do Saturday because I found out we have a winery like five minutes from our house, so, which I never knew about. Um, you know, you get in your area, you drive around exploring. You I went out driving one day. It's like, oh, there's a winery like right around the corner from us. So maybe go down to a winery Saturday and maybe shoot some video. We did a trip to Lexington a few years ago. We had a good time going to different wineries down there and kind of as a getaway type thing. So my cousin owns a winery. winery. Here in Southern Indiana. Yeah. Have you been over there? Have you guys went over to Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, they yeah. do really good stuff. He, uh, he goes up to like the Indianapolis wine, uh, wine competition, which I think is supposed to be like one of the top competitions in the world, supposedly. And he'll win. Uh, he wins medals every year up there. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. We went to one in Lexington and all they used were like the grapes that were actually natural here to kentucky which was pretty cool so you had everything pretty much done from the state and they had some really good wines and you know winery is like you gotta have like a wine and a cheese plate you know a cheese i'm sorry cheese and a meat plate so it's kind of like yeah uh, well and he has his own vineyard too so he, he does grow his own grapes also yeah but it's really good yeah we also have uh alexandria brewing is one of the breweries here they're having a special thing saturday so i might try to get down there as well so i don't know yeah, we were gonna we were gonna go to the 450 North has a uh, what they call their corn maze beer fest on uh, Saturday. Yeah. So it's what it sounds like they have a corn maze set up. So they have all the cutouts in the middle of the cornfield where all the breweries set up different places locations. Yeah. It looks like it'd be pretty cool. That's I think pretty, it's the, I think it's the third year they've had it now. So. You're in a maze, right? So. Yeah. I probably would even try to stop getting out of the maze. I would find a beer I like at one of the stands, and I would just stay there. Like, I'm okay being lost. I'm happy being lost. Well, they, ca- they <laughs> exactly. call it a maze, but it's really, exactly. like, it's really just a path to, like, a big opening, and then it's just another path to a big opening with all the tents. So it's not really, like, a maze maze, but yeah. the concept <laughs> of it sounds pretty cool, though. Like, the real world is out there. I'm going to stay here forever. And just drink- <laughs> right. I don't <laughs> want to go home. <laughs> It was like Alice in Wonderland. I fell into a place where it's all just beer everywhere. I'm never leaving. <laughs> yeah. Can I bring a tent and a cot? I'm just going to yeah. sleep here forever. I'm pretty sure if Dorothy would have ended up in a brewery, she would have been okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Forget Kansas. I'm staying here. So, at least that was, <laughs> that was me. I would stay at the brewery, you know, if the Wiz was the head brewer. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing behind that curtain? I'm making more beer. All right. Let's get them out. 
Uh, There's no place like brewery. No yeah, place not, like a brewery. <laughs> Instead of like freaking tapping the shoes, you'd be doing the chicken dance. <laughs> clanking, clanking your beer glasses together. Yeah. All the best, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So, Oktoberfest was a cool thing. I mean, that was fun. And that's like one thing Tim mentioned here. He was like, he wanted more Oktoberfest beers. We still have a good amount of Oktoberfest beers up here still that people have. So, yeah, I'm doing an Oktoberfest kind of series, kind of doing what the average Joe did of the Beer Patrol. I'm going to do kind of a, uh, like a week or less, kind of like a, a, a series on Oktoberfest beers. I figured yeah. I'd just do one because I've, Oh, God, got him. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you guys are going to want to hang out for Eric's PSA. <laughs> well, we're not doing a PSA tonight. Oh, we're not doing always, a PSA tonight. All the way to the PSA. Friends, though, let their friends drink malt liquor. Right. We got to let the people know that we care about them. We got to do the PSA. I.E. Eric. Friends, though, let your friends Jesus. drink malt liquor. <laughs> <sighs> Eric, you had a bug, you had a bug flat. It was only six percent. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think Eric, Eric changed our endorsers too. He has an Under Armour shirt on tonight, not a Nike. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> Switching teams. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my Nike swoosh shirt? Right. For the new contract now. <laughs> Me, me and Rod sporting the same team there. The Cincinnati yeah, Beer Fest. Uh... Yeah, the Beer Fest. <laughs> hey, I could have been to Beer Fest since you, but no one invited me down. <laughs> well, the next was in February, and that's 500 plus beers. Todd I'll Vick, be back. Todd I'll be back, Rod, if you'll have me again. I'll be yeah. back. Todd knows how crazy that one is. Joe, if you're watching, we're going there. <laughs> 2019, buddy. Right, go, go ahead and sign me up. I'll be yeah. I'll be down. We should I tell, we Shannon, should. Tell, tell, tell your wife like, look, I'm going to Cincinnati. Now, she don't care. She must have to go there for a sleepover. <laughs> 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 but I think that um, you know, when we do beer fest, we start, I think we should do something to get together, like, you know, yeah. we talk about brew dog or whatever, but even if we did like a just a big bottle share, we can easily rent one that happens here in Ohio or Kentucky and get people together and go crazy. Oh, for sure. We could even make like, a little note like Brett Kavanaugh, like, hey, we're gonna drink, blah blah blah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the neighbors. <laughs> well, I'm down. We can do it. Yeah. I think the Patriots beat the Colts tonight, by the way, too. Yeah, oh, was they it did. Night football night. Yeah. I think they said they still like Tom Brady to his 500th touchdown. So it's just him, Favre, and uh, Manning that have thrown that many. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, wow, it's like almost midnight. But your boy Ebron caught two touchdowns tonight, Eric. What's that, Tom? I said your boy Ebron caught two touchdowns tonight for the Colts. Is he Fuck he Ebron. Now? <laughs> oh, he <laughs> Did you catch I like <laughs> That's all I gotta say is ha hashtag fuck Ebron. Years, years, ago, years ago, I had Ebron on my fantasy team, and it was like so frustrating. He would drop the easiest passes, but catch the most difficult ones. Like, what is wrong with you? I think exactly. he's got that, that, Rod, that is why we the, the Lions always kind of. No, don't 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 even. Yeah. I, I think he's got five on the year now for Indianapolis. So yeah. <laughs> get Eric riled up, riled up on his mind. <laughs> what is their record now? Colts. The right, the Lions won a Colts. Oh, the Lions so one and four, I think now. Yeah, Colts are one and four now. But the Lions are they like? Do they they won already this year, right? One and three. One and three. So technically, the Browns are better than the Lions right now, right? They're the Browns. <laughs> one and one or something. <laughs> the Browns should have won three games now. Yeah, they're what? They're <laughs> so you have to hashtag it out to the people. <laughs> <laughs> there was a stat that came out talking about the Browns starting out one, one and one, 
And they went back and said, was there any team that ever started out as well as 1-1 and went and done anything at all that season? The only team that had actually done it was the 1974 Steelers. They started out 1-1-1, and and they won the Super Bowl. There you go. But I told the Browns fans, don't get ahead of yourself. Don't get ahead of yourself. There's no, there's no yeah, guarantee. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> It's only happened one time. <laughs> time will tell. Yeah. Right now, I'm just trying to hope West Virginia keeps doing as well as they're doing. They almost scared me last weekend. <sighs> Roller coaster ride. That's like a, that's like being a Lions fan, a West Virginia alum. Shut up, uh, Rod. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel the pain, Eric. That's the way it is with being a Hoosier pain. fan. You're up like 35 10 at halftime game by the fourth quarter, almost making a comeback. It's like, seriously? You ran all over them. You threw all over them. What the hell is wrong with you? Oh, we all went to get hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> they all did something when they gave up on the game. It's or something. Lions and it's a Colts, okay? Yeah. Eric Gilbert said Ebron joined a real team. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Ebron has options now. <laughs> Chris Rock says you're only good as your options. Only good as your options, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so we'll see what happens there. But yeah, I mean, I know Joe's gonna try to see if he got back and stuff. But I don't think he's back. If he is back, he's probably drunk already. If either I that is like fuck that dude, I can't, I can't even manage this. I thought he was. <laughs> he was going to the game, but he said he was going to a buddy's house for the game. So Yeah, I thought he was going to the game too, but then he did say they were just hanging out. Yeah. How far is he from Buffalo? Oh, I don't know. Uh, he's in Buffalo. Oh, is he in Buffalo? Uh, I, think, I think a suburb of Buffalo. I think he's a Buffalo vicinity. Eric Gilbert said the Packers started 1-1-1. One, one, and one. I never... I didn't. Now, if he says the Packers won the Super Bowl that year, I'd be like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, motherfuckers! <laughs> but I will tell you, I'm down to the last drops of the natty daddy. It's a real man right there for you. Mama didn't raise no quitter. Natty daddy is done. So I did it for the malt liquor guys. Malt Mustang, this was for you, son. So, right, right here, buddy. Y'all have, have to do a y'all have to do a follow up video tomorrow and. Tell us how you actually God. feel. God, no way. No <laughs> way. How many do you have there, Eric? So hold them up again. Okay, about three too many. You had three tonight? Oh, two platinums and an edge. All right. Whoa, that's why. That's why. BMO PSA. 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 Oh, God. No, please. Please don't have me. Don't, I don't, don't <laughs> have me use the PSA. <laughs> Who do Wolverines got this weekend? <laughs> Uh, Maryland. Maryland. Ooh, ooh, that could be an interesting game. Yeah, and the the Spartans have a Northwestern. Yeah. Huh. Eric Gilbert says, I don't even remember Ebron. And Obi says, see you guys, time for some lunch. Yes, thanks, Obi. So Obi, I forgot, I think, are you, I'm trying to think where you're at. You're overseas, I know, but I was trying to think if you're Australia or where you're at, but Obi's at lunchtime right now, so he's like 12 hours ahead of us. Obi, Obi's in Australia? Well, I know he's 12 hours ahead of us. I'm talking about actually at because he's overseas or okay. in other country, I should say. But appreciate it. Lunch actually sounds good after a couple of liquors. Yeah, I was going to say, what are you having for lunch? I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> you can run a Taco Bell. Taco Bell White always- Castle action going on. Yeah. yeah. Obi, Obi, have a Taco Bell over there in Australia? <laughs> that would be. <laughs> they probably or, do. I mean, Taco they Bell. probably do. That's the bad part. They probably do. Yeah. <laughs> but it's funny when you see some of the restaurant menus in other countries, like in Japan. I think McDonald's has actually sushi on their menu for some of their stuff and some different things. Really? Um, you know, because you're basing on what that culture actually prefers as well. So. Oh, he said no. Packers started one 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 this year, taking it all the way. So this year. The Packers and the Browns are your two teams that were 1-1-1 one, one, and one starting out. Maybe one of them wins the Super Bowl. Who knows? Yeah. 
You never know. Was one of the teams that hasn't been to Super Cleveland hasn't been to the Super Bowl yet. Houston hasn't been to the Super Bowl yet, although they're kind of like the new a newer team. Um, who else hasn't been to the Super Bowl yet? Of all Seattle. the teams, in there, Seattle's been there. Seattle's won the Super Bowl. Well, Seattle's been there, but they haven't won. Yeah, they did. They won the first time they won. They won with uh, when uh, Russell Wilson the first time they won. The second time they lost. They didn't get the ball. They didn't get the ball to the uh, the running yeah. back to New England. Yeah, when it Lynch. Yeah. yeah, they won the first time they went. Pete Carroll really? won back to back years. Yeah, they should have been back to back champs. Are you talking about teams that move like Arizona? Well, Arizona. I'm thinking teams that have been there. Well, Arizona's been a Super Bowl because remember Kurt Warner almost brought it back in that game. Oh yeah, well I thought you meant like won a Super Bowl. You just mean no, went to the Super Bowl. You've been there. Tampa Bay's been there. Yeah, Jacksonville, Carolina, both have. Jacksonville, Jacksonville hasn't been. Cleveland hasn't been. Houston hasn't been. Yeah, I thought Jacksonville played uh, Carolina in the Super Bowl one year. No, they lost. They've never been to Super Bowl. They got to the championship as far as they got to. Oh okay, okay. Because yeah, Carolina hasn't won one yet. yet. Um, San Diego's been there. Oakland. Uh, there. there were a couple more that haven't been there. The Lions haven't been yet. Yes, yeah, Lions, the Browns. There's two. Lions, Browns, Texans, Jaguars. Jets? Oh, they were back way back when. No, oh, Jets were way, way back. back. Yeah. yeah. Joe Namath. Joe Namath yeah. era. Is it just those four, maybe, that haven't been there now? I think, that, I think it, is, it, is, it is those four. The Giants have been, Eagles have been, Redskins have been. Titans. Titans have been. They went lost against the Rams. Yep. When they were the Titans? Yep. Yeah. One um, yard line, baby. It's a good. Yeah, it's a one, great, one yard line, one yard line. Dice, tackle. He tried to stretch. Couldn't make it. Couldn't make it. I remember, I forgot that one. I mm, think yeah. Four that haven't made it. That yeah. might be it. Yeah, I think it's the Browns, Lions, the what other two did you say, Ron? The Jaguars, the Texans. But then you look at them being expansion teams, right? So, I mean, the Panthers have been there twice. Yeah. Chiefs have been there. Broncos have been there. Raiders have been there. Rams. Yeah, I'd yeah, say they, probably – I'd say that's probably it. Yeah. Also have been eight in the first time. Yeah. The Lions and the Browns are the only two with the original – Right, that haven't been there. Yeah. Yeah. Even the Browns back in the sixties, like when they had or when Jim well, they Brown got beat by Denver. They, they got beat by Denver. Denver. Denver's been there. Denver's been there with Elway and Manning. Yeah, Manning won it with Denver. Yeah. The um the Browns in the sixties won championships, but it was before the merger. So oh, okay. since they in the NFL, they haven't been to the Super Bowl yet. Never really realized that, I guess. Dolphins, Dolphins were there with Marino his rookie year. Oh, well, I yeah. guess they were there the Shula years in the seventies too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Coach says, "Are we still live? I'm still drunk." <laughs> <laughs> ditto, buddy. Ditto, right here. Ditto. <laughs> you know, malt liquor and taco all night on the throne. <laughs> you don't want Taco Bell; it gives you the runs. Bad uh, combination. Yeah, Taco Bell is always a bad thing. It's like White Castle, right? It sounds good when you first say it, but you pay for it later. Yeah. Next day, you're like, son of a bitch, why'd I do that for? Exactly. So I'm wondering, was, is today the opening day of the NHL, I wonder? I think so. But I see some of the different hockey games popping up on Sports Center here. So Yeah. You're going to start seeing me do more. Red Wings, Pistons, since the Tigers are done, I'm going to be doing a Tigers wrap-up, lion stuff, and beer reviews. I didn't think I'd seen you do hockey before as much. So I'm going to start doing fun. hockey now. Hockey yeah. and basketball. Yeah. 
but I was obviously not this shit faced. <laughs> oh Although, come on! Yeah, if you had shit fit, if you had a channel called Shit Face Detroit News, oh my god, you probably get a ton of people. <laughs> <laughs> and then Eric Gilbert says Bell Me 3, so I think he's feeling a little bit of the Taco Bell too. <laughs> but Taco Bell is one of those things that pops up in the middle of the night. Like, oh, I can use a taco. It's like, who doesn't like a taco? Like, you like a taco, you're not American. Yeah. The thing I hate about Taco Bell, Bell, though, is they change your menu all the time. Like, you get something you like, next time you go there, like, yeah, we don't carry that no more. Like, what do you mean? Yeah. It's a freaking taco burrito. What do you mean you don't have it no more? Yeah, apparently my wife is like hooked on the um, what's the drink they got there? The Mountain Blast, Arctic Blast, or whatever. She's like, oh, yeah. about? Give me the Arctic Blast. I like that one. So, babe, can you give me an Arctic Blast, babe? <laughs> is that like the slushy things they have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you go like in the afternoons, you know, when people are working. You can uh, get those for like a dollar or something. Yeah. Ba I'm sorry, Baja Blast. Hey, goes to the Baja Blast. Baja oh, Blast. Baja yeah, Blast. there you go. Nice. Babe, can you give me Baja Blast, babe? I do. <laughs> you, oh, you're a funny guy. Funny guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you go to, um, like, the worst place to go to, in my opinion, is for, oh, Wednesday was the opener, Eric said, um, for NHL. Sonic. Yeah. You go to Sonic and you look at their menu and things look good, right? But they put the calories on it, right? So you look at yeah. this thing. Oh, this is like a <laughs> Reese's Pieces Blast. I think it'll be a good dessert. Seventeen hundred calories for a lot. Yeah, you're like, yeah, you're like I can't eat for another month. Yeah, you look at the medium, look at the small, and they got some other like mini me type small. I don't know. They got like, four different yeah. sizes. It's not just small. It's like the small size, like five hundred, six hundred mm -hmm. calories or whatever. It's like. But you're like, but that's not enough. I want more than that. So I used to think coastal creamy was creamy creamery was the worst for they load you on calories, but Sonic is definitely the worst for what they we, give you. We don't even have any yeah, Sonic yeah. around here anymore. Yeah. That's good. People are probably healthier now. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> we still show the commercials all the time, but we can't go get one. It's like nobody wants like a Coney dog until they see a Sonic commercial. Oh, I haven't had Coney in years. Let's go to Sonic and get a Coney. <laughs> One of those Coney dogs or corn dogs or whatever they have there. Yeah. 12,000 calories. Yes. <laughs> I'll have two of them. I'm not going to eat for the rest of the year. I'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> Just get fat looking at the menu half the time. I'll like, have two Coney really? and tots. It'll be good to go. <laughs> and a large shake. Just throw on top. Why not? And it's not like the food is bad there either. Like the food's actually pretty decent, but it's just like it's my, you know cheat, you it's my yeah. cheat day for the year. <laughs> yeah, my cheat day, right? Give me that double. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you start feeling the chin on in. So it's like And me. then you're thinking like when the when the waitress comes out with her roller skates, like I should probably be roller skating right about now instead of eating this, but <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, swap you. <laughs> Swap like, you swap you the cheeseburger for your skates. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting when you talk about the old era we grew up in, right? So the era we grew up in, it was like your parents would like finish your food, like you know. So we'd always keep eating the stuff through that was on the plate or whatever, and it's like we couldn't ever just walk away, which is bad, but <laughs> yeah. So now we order food. That's true. Like, That's true, though. We order food now, we get like a triple at Wendy's and like that, and everything. You're like half full. <laughs> half I can't waste it. I gotta finish it because that's like such a good bite. You can't walk away from that food. You gotta finish yeah. that damn triple. And it's like, and it'd be in trouble if I didn't eat it all. I got I gotta finish it. <laughs> and then you get the scale, and you're like surprised when the scale says when the scale says like, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like and a biggie fry. And then you get a frog. <laughs> you're fat. You're fat, bastard junior, right? <laughs> yeah, that's when the that's when the, that's when the uh, meter just doesn't go any further. Just yeah. like, but you know, <laughs> like I, I, should, better, I better step off be here. Scale. There should be a scale at some point where you step on it and just says, "Get the hell off me!" You fat <laughs> yeah, just goes, "Ouch! Ouch!" Like, Don't even give you the weight. Just tell you to get get off. Get yeah. off, man. <laughs> <laughs> get the fuck off, motherfucker! Yeah. Like, you're like, son of a bitch. You're, you're hurting me. You are too fat. <laughs> you need to go run. Go run and come back. <laughs> <laughs> that would be 
positive motivation for a lot of people. <laughs> what the scale say? It told me to go run. I can't get on it right now. <laughs> it said I'm very fat. It didn't even give me a weight. It said just go run. You get a tongue lashing from a machine. You're like, oh man, I guess. <laughs> yeah, just, you, know. you need to yeah. exercise. Yeah. <laughs> like what? See, uh, head coach asked, where did I play? I didn't actually play ball. I played uh, a couple years in high school, my freshman to senior year, because personally, when I played football, I didn't want to get hit as much. I was just not into that. And if I, my freshman through senior year in high school, I actually threw shot put in track. So the fact that I went out in the spring and I threw shot put, I picked up this little round ball and I threw it like 37 feet. And the coach was like, okay, you're our shot putter, which I guess was <laughs> freshman level to throw that far and it's like oh I can just lay around here and just show up at the meet and I have to lift weights and I can still you know do well and metal and all it's like all right I'll do this sport so I'm like why well, play football and get here I can just play over <laughs> yeah. here and then uh senior year I played football because uh just to play because it was senior year but yeah I threw shot put all the years and actually when I left high school Ithaca College in New York offered me a partial scholarship to come do track for them but I was like, are you kidding me? You know how cold it is in the winter? All that snow? I mean, Joe will tell you he's in Buffalo. I was like, no. So then I didn't go to West Virginia. But uh, I never I never played football. I went down there freshman year. One of my buddies, he actually wanted to go out for the team. So I said, okay, I'll try to go out there and walk ball with you. We'll see what happens. And we lifted for a few weeks, all that kind of stuff. And then we got out there, and we ran to 40. At the time in high school, I was like 230 at the time. So I ran to 40 against a guy and I beat him. I was a backup sprinter in high school when I threw shot put as well. Mm-hmm. And then the coach was like, we want you to run against this other guy. So I ran the other guy, beat the other guy. Well, at the time I was 230, I ran a four, five, six, forty. And they were like, they liked my, but then when I get to the weight room and they're like, you know, we had to bench press. I didn't know what weight to get. So I was doing what the other guy did. And one guy ended up getting a position over me because he lifted more. Like, I think he maxed out, like they said, like 275. And I was like 250 or 260. But they asked me to come back out for West Virginia to play football. They just want me to work on my strength and everything. But I was like, yeah, I just came off my buddy anyway. So it wasn't a big deal to me or whatever. But even today, when I was actually, um, when I went to uh, Toledo, I stopped at one of the convenience stores. I wanted to get like a, a monster for the drive back. And one of the old guys was like, hey, what team do you play for? But I was like, I don't play for, my whole life I've been asking the question, like, what team do you play for? I got, <laughs> friends, I got friends in high school that I'll tell you, like they're surprised I never like, like played ball later on because I had the size and stuff for them. I'm like, no, I mean, I mean, I just wasn't really into playing. I mean, I, I knew people that did play. I had buddies that played, and you ask them now, they're getting needles and shots and all kinds of stuff under the pain. I'm glad I didn't yeah. play, but you know, so yeah. But I didn't play ball. I just uh, do a little shot put and hung out. Plus, if you throw shot put in track, you can hang out and do anything. You can talk to the girls, so it all works out. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> and then. Uh, he says, where does Todd and Eric live? So Todd's in Indiana, and Eric is in Michigan. Mm-hmm. And Eric Gilbert says he goes to Fat Bastard Burrito, open at 3 a.m. <laughs> the, the burritos are the size of a newborn. <laughs> yeah, we have we have one of those places here. It's called, uh, I forget the name of the Mexican place, but it's the, a burrito size of your head. Really? Is that huge and everything? Yeah, it's big. We got one of our local chains here. It's kind of funny when you go there, but they do some really good, like, giant burritos, or you get, like, the bowl or the plate or whatever, but they're basically slapping at the face of, like, Chipotle or whatever, like, on the back of their T-shirts. Oh. It's like corporate burritos can bite me or something. It's something they say <laughs> that's hilarious, but mm. it's actually pretty good burritos they actually put out. Um, and head coach says, and this is what Mall Liquor does. Turns gentlemen into weirdos. <laughs> weirdos, <laughs> weirdos. <laughs> and then um, Drunken One says, all right, gang, time for me to head out. Y'all have a great Friday. You too, Drunken One. Thanks for swinging by. He said nighty night. And yeah. Yeah, Drunken One. Right there, so. I think we'd better kind of maybe, well, at least for me. Is what? Say adios. Oh, yeah, it's going to get lazy. I was ready to wind down because it's like 12 or 9 now. I got to do it to get up and work. I don't think I'm going to – I think I'll be all right, though. I mean, I don't have anything of a heavy type buzz or whatever. Definitely have a little bit of a happy feeling, but – Oh, I, 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 I am happy feeling. Oh, it wasn't that bad. I thought it was okay. I mean, they're not stuff I would usually drink, but it, they did all right. I wish I'd have chosen wisely. <laughs> 
<laughs> See, I almost got the four loco. Did you, even, did you even finish yours time? No, 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 I got about halfway through it. It was too damn sweet. It was too damn sweet. It was burning uh, my tummy. <laughs> you did yourself a favor, Rod, but I would say just get one. Get the gold and just try it. I, I thought it was know. Shannon was there to bust your balls now. That'd be hilarious. Go big or go home, right, Todd? Do yeah. what? Go big or go home. Yeah, that's right, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I went home. <laughs> I went big and then I went home. Exactly. Then I went to an IPA. Well, we definitely appreciate everybody that watched and hopefully everybody had a good time. And if you do, feel free to hit that like button as well, just so people see it apparently. That's something, that's something the YouTube creators say we're supposed to say on the Academy. But outside of that, Eric, I'll turn it over to you. <laughs> Are you really sure you want me to do this? All right. Do it. You can do it. <laughs> you can't close the show without you coming out, son. All right, man. If you guys like Rod J's video, video hit that uh, like <laughs> button at the bottom. Hit that thumbs up oh, button. Yeah. What's that? What's that? You had a different opening. I know where you're going with it. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm trying to promote your channel, buddy. All right? I, I appreciate that, sir. Three a curveball. Sorry, I interrupted. Hit, hit that thumbs up, guys, if you like this video. Hit that thumbs down if you do not. But, guys, if you had too much drink like myself, I would get a designated driver if I was out. Out and about, but you know, more or less, if you if you had too much drink, please get this. Uh, oh my God! <laughs> let, 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 let's let's just stop that there, right there. Come on, come on! All you're gonna do is hurt, all you're gonna do is hurt yourself. You hurt can yourself. do it. You get out there, you're gonna get stopped. You're gonna get pulled over. You're gonna stupid sobriety test. Come on, you know it. You know it. You, you know it. You know it. You know it. I know, but I like when you do it. So call an Uber, a Lyft, a buddy. Come get you. <laughs> right. Because if you drive just don't, home, just are you don't do it, guys. Yourself? Just don't do it. So <laughs> we tell you this because we actually care. You know, make sure you drink. You drink responsibly. You don't want to hurt the people you love. Otherwise, you'll be six feet under. So that all being said, appreciate everybody that hung in tonight. Hope you had a good time. <laughs> Look forward to doing a hangout next week. I don't know how I'll feel in the morning. I just know how he's going to feel in the morning. How he's going to feel in the morning. So we'll see. But appreciate all the support and keep watching the channel for some more good things. That all being said, we will catch you later. Have a good night. Have a great Friday. Keep drinking those good craft beers. Remember, there's always time. Get your beer on. Cheers, everybody. All right.